Got all the audio uh, going here. Like usual, it's time to count it down in three, two, one. You know, that guy was right. We do suck. No news there. 7112. I don't even know what I'm doing out there. I'm sick of it, Boof. I'm sick of being so average. It landed on my face. <laughs> this is Film Sack. Oh, sure. Hello and welcome to Film Sack. This is Film Sack, mining the very depths of film entertainment for all mankind. This is episode 646. I'm Scott Johnson. Joined today by Brian. He also keeps a load of food in his locker done away. Mmm, it's liverwursty. Mm. Oh, hi. This week on Film Sack, we get back in time to 1985 to revisit our teen years when we were hairy like the wolf, smelly like the gym locker liverwurst, and busy hiding in the family bathroom from dad while staring at this comedy slash monster slash coming of age classic. Now doing handstands on a van driven by HBO Max Max. What's that? Can you come in? Uh, no, dad. Uh, not this time. Not this. Uh. There's a wiener at the end. We saw a guy's wiener at the end. Hey, did I guess the bit? No. Dang right. it. Anywho. Ah! <laughs> Trash. Anywho. Listen, kid. There are three rules that I live by. Never steal Randy's three rules joke. Oops. Never accurately guess Ibbitt's intro song, not even once. And never get in a closet with Scott Johnson for a makeout session when they call your name. Now you stick to that and everything else is whipped cream floor wrestling. Randy, more sensational, darling. We want to be able to smell you. Yeah. Now I feel gross. Oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. Whipped cream floor wrestling. Thank you for bringing that up again. Mm-hmm. Also with us, Randy, nothing weird about Boof playing basketball with your dad, Jordan. Aloha, Scott. Brian. Brian. Randy. Thank you for coming to Homeroom, which is, uh, it, which in the future won't be called Homeroom anymore. It's kind of a weird thing to say. Homeroom. Mm. Like it's it's like it's somehow different than Classroom, which is mm. you know precisely what it is. But we do things differently here at High School High School. For, for example, our middle-aged villain guy isn't the principal. He's the vice principal and our middle-aged basketball coach isn't black in fact we kind of you know forgot that black people exist when we put this place together oopsie (laughs) oh uh look over there it's your dad playing basketball with your friend who happens to be a teenage girl that's not weird at all but hopefully you forgot about the previous thing (laughs) and you're gonna get through the roughest puberty ever if you follow my rules three number one (laughs) just get a keg of beer It'll, it yeah. won't be easy when you're a 25-year-old pretending to be a 17-year-old pretending to be a 21-year-old, but apparently all you have to do is act like you're demon-possessed and they just give you the beer. Number two, never, ever skip house parties. My God, man. With the exception of how house parties always have way too many people in every stinky room of the house, it's your best chance to hang out with a woman in fetish wear while everyone else is wearing sweaters and jeans. Number three. Number three. Remember that everything, and I mean everything, comes in dichotomies. It's all binaries. Boys and girls, parents and kids, good looking and hideous, slender and chub. Even the (laughs) girls come in two types only. Blondes are desirable, brunettes are boof. <laughs> boof. <laughs> boof. It's funny as well, or boof. We'll talk about boof more coming up. Uh finally with us, Brian, his hand standing on cars is renowned Ibit. Yes, it totally was. Mm. Uh this was uh oh you know, I'll just start like this. Uh hold on, let's do it. Let's <laughs> on, and we're taking it back. Homophobic bye, 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 homophobic slurs. That's homophobic amazing. slurs. That's Very amazing, well dude. You, you you really punched up like my least favorite song of all yeah. time. <gasps> shut it, yeah. uh, shut yeah. your mouth. It's, really? It's, everybody's got that thing, right? Where they're oh like where you where you like realize, oh wow, other people like this thing that I really dislike. <laughs> you know, like yeah. you got I am such an 
unapologetic Warren Zevon fan. There is like, uh, I grew up with that album, Excitable Boy, like the whole thing and Lawyer's Guns and Money and mm. Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner. It was just such and, a. Uh, my experience was like, I remember it very specifically. I never heard of this guy, was, even though I grew up playing uh, music, like a musician and studying music. I never heard of this guy until the Gary The Shandling Color of Money show. Oh, what, okay. What All right. The, I was thinking the Color of Money was. Uh, <laughs> Was it the was it, uh, what was Gary Shandling's HBO show? This the Gary oh, Shandling show. Was it? No, no the, 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 uh, um, uh, the, the different one? talk show host one. With yeah. the, no, uh, oh, the oh, I thought you were talking about the one that where he, yeah, the one that was called the Gary <laughs> Shandling show on yeah, Fox. Yeah, yeah. No, what was the one that, oh. uh, the one on HBO, was, the the yeah, the um, 90s, it's an amazing show. Um, I, it is. I used to watch Arliss and this, and, yeah, geez, ah. and and on this show, which was a fake uh, talk show. One night, they one one episode is all about they're gonna have this musician on called Warren Zevon, and I'm like, oh, that's a fictional, that's a fictional guy. I've never heard of this person. And then they, he comes on and he plays this song, and I, I'm sorry, but like if you're hearing it for the first time in this setting, this song is terrible. Like this, song, I'm like I was, I'm a pianist, and I'm like, oh wow, this really phoned it in. A Larry I, Sanders show. That's why Larry, Larry that's why Sanders. Not, that way I could not put it together. Oh, like, it's, it's so similar to that, but it's not called it. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. Guarantee anyway, there I, are listeners screaming at their freaking earbuds, yelling, yeah, yeah, yelling yeah, yeah. their heads off. Because one of the funniest shows ever created so was, good. It was yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was so great. I, I, I thought the song, the song is fine. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's, like, there's a ton of people who like the song for good reasons. It's just like I had never heard of the man or the song until oh, wow. this moment, and it just like struck me wrong. And I've never uh -huh. been able to get out of that initial, you know, first impressions. Right? <laughs> no, I get Did it. You, there... But you heard that version. You heard that before you saw it in the color of money when tom cruise is using it as his like uh beating everybody montage and running yes. his fingers through his own yes, hair I, stuff. yeah okay. i saw the color of money like uh for the first time like 10 years ago yeah oh wow okay. but him dancing around the table that song fit that whole montage really well it um, did yeah but i yeah. if i'm honest i have a love hate with it because i like warren zevon a lot as well and i used mm -hmm. to love it when you'd go on letterman you always go on letterman Oh yeah, and yeah. um, Tourist I would always look friends. forward to that. But this particular song, it's a lot of wahoo, like a lot. It's, it's you know? all right. You know, I will. I will concede that it's his. Uh, it's his. The song only has six words. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my mind set on you. Song, right. But I mean, it's it is you know Hunky. like in, if you say oh George Harrison, what an incredible musician, except for man that one song. Like you know, I can see this being people's least favorite. Warren yeah. Zevon song. Yeah, and you're gonna have you're gonna have like a uh, you're gonna have like Paul McCartney songs that strike you that way, and so on and oh, so on. Like yeah, yeah. really famous, really successful. Let them in. Wow, well, yes, the, the the Christmas uh, wonderful Christmas time. Yeah, yeah I, I actually, the worst. I actually feel like this is a this is like a really great example for Teen Wolf. Like mm. uh, like Teen mm. Wolf itself. It, like there are gonna be people who really like this movie. Oh yeah, no, I heard from I don't know multiple people this weekend or uh, saying, oh, I'm so excited for you guys to do this. This is this holds up. I just watched it. It holds up. And all oh, kind well, of I was say, and those people haven't seen this movie in a long time. It sure feels like it. Uh, we're going to play. So I got a fake, fake Fletcher in intro. Now, um, okay. this is a weird thing. The When I don't have a listener do it, uh, which we don't have this week, I go to the, uh, the AI, right? And I have that fake Mario thing do it. And it's usually good for laughs, right? I put it in there right. this time and it goes, sorry. We are unable to do this because we oh. think you're putting, we think you're doing something sketchy, so you can't do it. We'll refund your points or whatever. <laughs> we, we think you're using this for a podcast. Yeah, or something right. like that. It shouldn't matter. They probably got, they're probably taking it, they're probably taking a, uh, an advanced approach of blocking off any Mario type stuff. That's probably what heated off, right? Yeah, but it's, In the voice so, of Mario. it's so off, though. Oh, I, I know it is so off. So that saying, must think, be it, right? They're finding they're yeah. they're finding ways of saying, oh, okay, you trained this on a thing where you don't have permission. Well, that's true. I don't right. have Mario's permission. So I then you tried sent that message, by the way. AI, Mario AI sent that <laughs> message. I know it did. A robot sent that message. I mean, uh, Mario <laughs> doesn't really have a voice uh, like other you know, that other than people who have voiced him. I mean, if you said mm -hmm. in the voice of Chris Pratt as Mario, maybe, but Mario himself doesn't really have a voice, right? Just woo. -hoo. Yeah, yeah, he's he's. I mean, he does the it's actor, I mean. the actor who does it does. But you know, whatever. Yeah. So I was I'll like, okay, fine, I'll do whatever you want. So I used one of their built-in guys, and I just thought it worked out just fine. All right, so I'm just gonna play okay. it. Okay. So just setting you up here. That's why this is not Freaky Mario guy. This is somebody else. Here you go. Teen Wolf, 
A young high school male student discovers that his family has a secret. He gets unlucky and gets affected by the secret. He turns into a wolf. It turns out that he is popular when he is a wolf, but his life is turned upside down by it and tries to deal with it. I would totally make out with Boof. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually like that better because a lot of times I can't make out what Mario is screaming. And I got to actually hear... I know, I got to actually hear what Scott input in there, and yeah. that was kind of amazing. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Also, if it does an amazing impression, I should just yes. train it on you. I'll just train it on you, and then I won't get in <laughs> yeah, trouble. On... <laughs> then you won't get in yeah. trouble. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. That's not a bad idea. But yeah, this is Teen Wolf. I did misspell it as Woof on purpose. Wolf. Uh, just to, you know. Yeah, I say Wolf. Teen Wolf. It makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the Rod Daniel film from 1985, which is crazy because this is uh, Michael J. Fox making a movie he didn't really want to make. At the same time, he's making a movie he really wanted to make, which was uh, Z with Zemeckis and uh, Back to the Future. Those two movies both released in the same year, which is crazy. Huh. I didn't me. know. Did, did he say he didn't want to make it? I, I, I thought he made it because he's a crazy kid. He's had a TV show at the time. He hadn't quite got the job for... Uh, he hadn't even heard about the job for uh, Back to the Future yet. Well, let me give you a quote. Wolf. Let me give you a quote that he said. Yeah, he yeah. says, Michael J. Fox disliked making this film so much that he refused oh. to return to the sequel. In an interview at the time, while Back to the Future 1985 was in production, he lamented the following. Quote, Steven Spielberg's... Oh, I'll do it in his voice. Steven Spielberg's down the street making great movies, and I'm playing a werewolf. <laughs> But he didn't. He wasn't initially <laughs> resistant to it, right? It well, it's a job. Like he was you're wanting gonna, to get into movies. Yeah, it's yeah. a job. You're going to take it. You're yeah. you're you're in a break between season filming of uh, uh, Family Ties. Show, family and, family yeah. Ties yeah. and I guess what's her name? Meredith Ber Berner Baxter. What's her name? Baxter Bernie. Baxter, Baxter Bernie. Bernie. Baxter Bernie. She was pregnant and about to give birth, so that got so things got delayed for the season yeah. shoot. So they were like, you know what, you can finish up your your wolf movie, and so you just finish up your wolf movie, whatever that is. You oh. just go ahead and finish up your wolf movie. Yeah. He did say he did say he, that he hated. And I he did say he hated the uh, the outfit. He said it was really itchy and stuff. I read some interviews oh, sure. on that, and so yeah, that is probably doing the makeup. He was filming. He was filming like. One of them at night, one of them at day, doing Back to the Future mm. at the same time. Man, that would be so, I can't even. It's a lot of work. That would be so much. Work. Yeah, but when you're 23 and you're healthy and you're running around, I mean, he looked he looked great by the way, playing basketball, mm -hmm. jumping into people's arms, that and all this was, stuff. When it was him, I had was, it was him. The, like him the stunt running guy, down the hall. When it was him, I mm -hmm. wish this had a post credit scene that showed the stunt guy clearly because there's so many shots of of his stunt guy like standing on a van and jumping around on a mm -hmm. basketball court like i really want to i want to know yeah. that guy mm -hmm. yeah no he apparently there, there was two right because there was uh, there was one guy that was actually good at basketball because come to find out michael j fox could not play basketball and they had like a camp and everything <laughs> and he really sucked at it so they got a, another guy dressed him up <laughs> they sent um, him to basketball camp all fun yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so and, uh, and he was, uh so yeah and there's a whole story about that i guess they were close and got to be good friends or whatever on set but they were really like each other size wise and yeah, and the other guy was like a, a basketball, uh, or, or I guess he was a big deal at his college. I guess he was a big college player. Yeah, but anyway, uh, the point is, uh, he's just it's, he's in this transition, right? And I had these two dark ironies I could not get out of my head. Call me, call me um, sad or whatever you want to call me. All right, sad. But all I could <laughs> thanks. All I could think of was two things. One, the sad irony of how physical he is in this. And how physical yeah. he can't yeah. be today. It makes me just right. sad. Yeah. And then secondly, well, it, second thing that really got me was his the actor who plays his dad, who I think, by the way, is perfectly cast. I love him as his dad. Yes. Uh, so he good. died last year of oh, Parkinson's. Okay. So he was older oh, in his 80s. Oh. But but James the fact Hampton. that you got these two guys were eventually yeah. going to get Parkinson's. It's just sad, man. I don't like that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. debilitating late life stuff and in michael j fox's case way too early life but yeah yeah um and, anyway but you know what you kind of look back and you're like he, he talks a little bit about in some of his, his documentaries and stuff michael j fox does but you know it's it's good that he worked so hard and got so much done early in his life because he was headed for this mm -hmm. and uh you know it was such a bright shining star but james hampton who plays his dad mm -hmm. one of the laugh out loud moments for me still is when he, he wolfs out yeah, and he's still just—he's yeah. just dad standing yeah, at the door. Right. That just visually <laughs> oh, cracks okay, me up son. every time. Yeah, yeah right. it's like, and there's <laughs> there's some trivia that when they did that, let's see, did I write that one yeah. down? I didn't, but when they showed it to test audiences, yeah. um, 
the audience laughed so hard and so immediately that they couldn't <laughs> nobody heard the next bit of dialogue so he they went back it in so and edited straight, it. man he yeah. plays it so dead straight yeah. hands in pocket <laughs> yeah and behind the scenes i guess okay. he hated that makeup it took four hours to put on and the, and the older the yeah. dad he says he tore it off so fast it, he hated it it made him claustrophobic yeah. it was like yeah. itchy and yeah. all that stuff but mm. Yeah, there's some great, <clears throat> great stuff around this. But let's talk about the overall. Like we were, we're talking about how people are like, oh, that movie holds up. You're going to love it. Um, I mean, it's 80s as shit. And I have some fondness yeah. for that. And I don't yeah, hate like, this movie, but I can't sit here with a straight face and the, say it's great. You know, The big strike against it is what it has going for it. And that is mm -hmm. that it's so formulaic. And it's like, I, I always try to tell people, I told my kid before watching this movie, give, your, give yourself over to the formula. Like, mm -hmm. the, tell yourself, oh, this is, you know, like, it, this is good. It's entertaining because it's formulaic. Mm -hmm. and because if you if you don't, then you're going to just see everything wrong with it, and you're not going to have a good time. And you're yeah. supposed to have a good time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and it is. Yeah. It's a good time, you know? It's fun. I don't I don't think I, I would, uh, you know, rush right out and say all my friends need to sit down and make sure no. they see Teen Wolf if they missed it, but... But it's, I don't know. I have fond memories of it. It's, it's very, fun. yeah, I do too. It's a, it's 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 a very on the surface movie. Um, and you know, it's it's obviously, uh, you know, comparing uh, becoming a werewolf and you know, adolescence and you know, peaking and being a monster somewhat, feeling like a freak, all these yeah. uncomfortable moments. Wishing there was something unique about you, and then finally yes. getting it and realizing, you know, now people yeah. only care about the uniqueness. And there's yeah, a, yes. there's a message there, and it's a good message. Sure, straightforward. Right on the surface, and we were all fun. we were all of an age then where it felt like it was important to ha these movies needed to reflect our adolescent struggles yes. or whatever. And you know, Back yeah. to the Future did that in some ways, but so did so did most movies then. I feel like all the movies, like every John Hughes movie, obviously, it was aimed right at us, yeah. like square we got, their we, souls. We were rich, Scott. As as I grow up, I'm like, holy crap! There were so many movies made for us. Uh, like no other generation that I could think of. And I'm going back through movies and stuff. Of course, there, there's been movies made for other generations. But, man, we had a treasure trove of movies made for us, talking to yeah. us, making, oh, yeah. making parents look stupid. No short, no shortage, <laughs> right? Like parents were, were dumb. Uh, uh, yeah. We were a, a forgotten generation in that we could kind of come and go as we please and nobody would notice. Yeah, uh, that that Gen X, that whole Gen X vibe was really pounded into us film wise. Sometimes I wonder mm -hmm. if most of that identity is from the movies we watched. I don't know sometimes, right. but there's a lot of content one. being made for generations now. But I mean, they were big. These were big budget productions. Even though this is only two million dollar movie, it is really hitting well above its weight class. In my opinion, it doesn't like a two million dollar movie. They got lucky. They got Fox the second before he became yeah. impossible to get. Yeah, yeah, before like when he was on his way to become a list for sure. Yeah, yeah and he well, went and, and he and even no says one else in the movie. Like right. there, there's no one else <laughs> no. in the movie that it's <laughs> even close to. Like, uh, like you could just replace them all with AI or whatever. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. He right. is no. he is the whole movie, and it's like every like the girl he's interested in is blonde. The guy who's the you know the other the other boyfriend is uh you know dime store yeah. Mark Scott Arnold Wolf or whatever. Mick. It's there's a Mick. lot of almost like a lot of you know we'd make the joke about the blank you ordered on Wish but you know Boof is the Justine Bateman you ordered on Wish. Uh, the coach <laughs> the coach is the Jay Thomas you ordered on Wish. The the best Oof. friend is the uh uh Fisher Stevens you ordered on Wish. You know it's like the, right. well, and the Boof, is, except for Boof is such a complete typecast like it's also mm -hmm. whoever played the girl the girl nerd in real genius, real genius. Yeah. Right? right like very similar exact thing mm -hmm. yeah. But, yeah. The, but then there's michael j fox and he's carrying uh, a whole a hardware store full of groceries into a theater and you're like wow i can't look away from this guy he is yeah. the whole movie yeah he and really he's is. great oh my you God, see, when he's th th that's the one thing you do walk away from from this movie is you see the star power happening you're like oh yeah. okay this yeah. is this is a he he stands apart from everybody else in this movie for the most part i think his dad's a really i think his dad's a good actor and it's fun oh, to yeah, watch yeah, him yeah, oh, yeah. oh but they're it's, all fine actors but he just stands out so much against his peers that you're like oh yeah he's gonna do great and according to the trivia he started this movie started to make it just would show up in his car nobody gave a shit by the time they were done filming 21 days later 
he had become so big in about a month from television and appearances and yeah. all this other stuff that he had to have like four security guards all the time by the time they finished, which is just yeah. must be a crazy wow. transition in your life, right? Jeez, yeah. You go from like nothing to something. I mean, I feel like this is like what a lot of MCU people went through because they, they were oh, kind yeah. of unknown yeah. and then bam, they explode on the scene and then there's no turning back after that. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Who the, uh, we talked surprised. about his. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I, know, I, just, I was just gonna say, Scott, who would that be in the MCU? Like, I feel like I didn't really have any sense of Sebastian Stan. Yeah, that's right. a good one. Tom Hiddleston, Sebastian Tom Stan. Hiddleston. Oh, yeah. Hiddleston's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, these not that these guys didn't have good work now. behind them and all that. Of course they did, but they just, you know, right. that star. I would even say like, um, Chris, um, who's Captain America? I think his name. Chris Pratt. Yeah, Pratt. Oh, or not <laughs> Pratt. No, Pratt. Pratt is Star Lord. Evans. Right. Uh, Evans. Chris Evans. Evans. He has three Chris's. Yeah. It's such a mess. Yeah. But the but Chris the Evans Chris had problem. had you know he had a career. He was even in a Marvel movie before that. But I think that there's right. just this moment of like mass exposure mm-hmm. that you just yeah. cannot you know once yeah. that sun hits you're you're permanent. You're just there. Yeah. A yeah. lot of these a lot of these actors were doing TV stuff. Uh, Mark Arnold, who plays Mick, by the way, loved to hate him so freaking good. Yeah. He, and love well, to there hate was something him. about him that that is like, oh, I've seen that guy in a bunch of a uh, bunch of stuff, but it, he's yeah. a guy who kind of looks like other guys who play that same kind of role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. and, um, and and at different angles. From one angle, he yeah. looks like Ron Livingston, and from yeah. another angle, another person. It's fascinating. He's how had that a works. great career though. His his his, his oh, IMDb man, he's, is on he's fire. His ass, yeah, ass and, off. Uh, and he Blade looks Runner like uh, twenty forty nine too. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, he looks like Henry Rollins in his in his IMDb photo. I'm like, is that, <laughs> he no, kind of does. Yeah. Mark in the in the in the twenty forty nine role, he's one of the interviewers. Like the uh, when he talks to Kay, uh, and I can't remember the thing he has to repeat, but the thing he repeats, um, that weird yeah. phrase in Blade Runner. I can't think of the damn phrase. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's the one oh, that Jesus. does it. He administers yeah. it, and that's freaking great. That guy, but he, he, I mean, you get to have a good, good guy, you could have a great bad guy. And I thought he did, I thought he did great. He was a I good was, bad was, guy. He was also, a, I've hated, he, I've hated that guy since I was a teenager. If you didn't have an actual <laughs> teenage wolf standing next to him, you'd think that he yeah. was a wolf because he was so hairy. Yeah. When he got his shirt all yeah. ripped off, I'm like, dude, you got hair on your <laughs> ribs, man. <laughs> We're going to find out you're his long lost cousin for the threequel. Yeah, um, Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood lies to us. A lot of people are a lot hairier in real life. There's a definitely a, a lot of shaving going on in Hollywood. I yeah, because yeah. I speak as a aren't hairy doing man. Any of it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, was it? what was the story? I think it was when we saw. Yeah, it's when we saw Hook, and they talked about how Robin Williams had to get oh, shaved down yeah. for it because yeah. his arms are so freaking hairy. Yeah, and yeah. he had to go shirtless. You're like, we can't have you in your normal coat. Yeah, yeah. Dude, no one's gonna do. believe you're. Uh... <laughs> You gotta trim this up a bit, sir. Yeah. Oh, man, boy. Yeah. Did have any? Oh, go ahead. Go this ahead. movie is just like it's it's in a glass dome of movie magic. This movie, mm-hmm. and I love I love that, and I, I can understand if you don't like it, but I really really like how that for this movie, there's no one else in the world, and the writers of this movie also wrote uh, Commando. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's it's the same thing. We and I think we talked about this when we sacked Commando. There's this thing like there's no one else in the world. Like uh, our our characters are moving around and they're never intersecting with strangers. They're never intersecting with cops. Like just imagine in real life, in reality, if a guy, if some guy somewhere turned into a werewolf and a hundred people <laughs> in a gymnasium saw that, mm. like mm-hmm. there would be. Mm-hmm so much news and cops and like all, all kinds yeah. of things but they just these folks live in this glass dome and they just <laughs> carry on with their lives it's there is like yeah there's there's uh michael j fox is the only person who's ever seems to have a reaction to being a werewolf like you know yeah. everybody kind of stops and pauses for a second but the fact that oh he's still playing basketball all right okay yeah this is a great game hey what a great game well, we gotta get uh he got a basket <laughs> they, they move on to that really quick and the other members of the team are like okay i guess he's a wolf great let's keep going yeah. and so even well his handled. best friend in the garage uh is like oh styles. okay you're a wolf styles yeah the Jerry uber the, boy is that so a trope forward. the uber best friend cool uber cool well, it's not uh, yeah. it's not just that again the go to the writers the guy's name is styles the yeah. the only yeah. person carrying any extra weight is named chubb like literally <laughs> named chubb <laughs> yeah yeah and that's which, francis yeah, from a, uh yeah from we've seen the, tons of stuff peewee's yep. uh, Wee's big adventure yeah, oh that's so where i saw i didn't dig deep the but bicycle, i knew it yeah, oh, he's been in lots of things but peewee's yeah 
probably the most. You, really you see him a lot in uh, uh, procedurals now. That's kind of his gig now. Mm -hmm. He's in all kinds of NCIS stuff and that sort of thing. But uh, you could tell everybody, especially him. These guys are all their late twenties. Uh, like he's uh, Michael J. Fox is the oldest oh, yeah. at twenty four. Everyone yeah, Styles is twenty seven here. Uh, yeah, this is a high school full of grown men. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and the girls yeah. too. They're all way older than they're supposed to be. But the, yeah. we That's accepted this. Another back good then. example of what I'm talking about, by the way, if you're going to have a 25 year old playing a teenager, you have to cast other 25 year olds around them, or yeah. it looks bad, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. like, once you give into that and just allow yourself to enjoy it, it's such a better movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I won't lie. Like, there were moments where I was like, "This is great," and then there were moments where I went, "When I was in high school, I thought this music." was real music but instead it's like really <laughs> shitty elevator cover stuff it's bad it really is so I bad actually, yeah i actually like the music it is fitting and it's unique and it it just it lives in this movie and yeah. I, I but I, it's some of it what about the it stuff where it's like a fake version of um uh what remember was it this is a remember this is a two million dollar movie okay Mm -hmm. And so this happened a lot it during the eighties, <laughs> right? Like, man, I love, I love it when they, they kind of have their own little, little type of style of music and stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I just like it. It, it doesn't like bother the, me uh, at all. The I dance, the, the, the scene at the, uh, the homecoming or prom or whatever it is, I guess prom, yeah. but just the, you know, this is our funk song and it sounds just like, you know, but it's, it's not it's, quite. Uh, it's a, it's it's emotional music, so it's like yeah. when you're watching a soap opera, and you know they just they just got somebody on the piano going tickle 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 because they ain't got time to produce yeah. a whole bunch of you know new music, so they just got some no, guy no. give us a yeah. mood, and yeah. that's kind of what they did here. They took some instruments that were kind of unique and odd and unsettling, and somebody just made something that fit well, into this. Mm -hmm. And I kind of it's, like it's a guy named it's a guy named Miles Goodman, and he he made music for other movies too. And in this one, he, it just feels like he's such a downgrade Randy Newman. Like, mm. you know, oh, well, like, especially yeah. the montage basketball scene that was literally yeah. like a Randy Newman spoof. Yes. Like, I'm just playing basketball and Bell, doing the Bell thing. the Wolf is playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and I really, Look I at really don't. That was get popular. I, I, I'm not going to compare this too much to Major League, but uh, at the end of the movie on Max, uh, it was like, now you should watch Major League. I'm like, yes, I should. Yeah. And yeah. of course, Major League is actually actual Randy Newman. And it's like so much better as a result. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, if you can get real Randy Newman, you do. But, um... but what's the budget? Budget, I mean, the budget for Major League, I'm sure, is a few more ten, times. ten times. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, do, do you think? Um, uh, what was I going to say the? Uh, uh, but, oh, I thought I thought Ibit, you were going to do a Randy Newman song today. I was counting on it. I was sure. Oh, really? It. Yeah, just because of oh, that that's scene. That's how much it sounds. It's really this movie really sounds like it's just ripping him off. Yeah, that that's time. that scene where he's playing ball and they're playing that Randy Newman ripoff. I went. I'm looking forward to Brian's. Uh, That's hilarious. I uh, from I was from the get go. This yeah. was the only song I considered, and well, uh, oh, you you considered "Hungry Like the Wolf" for sure. I considered it after the fact. I said, "Oh, I, like boy, this is this feels Hungry too on the like nose." Teen wolf. And I said, "Oh yeah, I guess Hungry Like the Wolf" is another wolf Eating song. Never so worst, but uh, <laughs> in the locker room. <laughs> Oh, no, I, I seriously, and that was one take. That was the series, the first take. And I'm like, I've sung this <laughs> song so many times in the car that right. I feel like I've got Zivon's like uh, his breathy, his out of breath growl from that song, like and, right. <laughs> and packing a bunch of syllables in where they don't go. Right, exactly. It's like I don't care if this verse rhymes with anything. Yeah. I'm gonna jam a bunch <laughs> of syllables into it. <laughs> Basically, is what that is. Yeah, it was kind of like that. I, yeah. I, uh, I'm sorry to bring this back up, uh, because like, I don't know, maybe, maybe we're uncomfortable, but like, wh why is this movie so white? Why are uh, like, I, <laughs> the, 80s, right? it's even the two, me. the two major scenes with, with, uh, black people are, uh, styles going through the bathroom and talking jive to a guy who, you know, doesn't give him the time of day or just looks at him like he's crazy. And then the, um, break dancer in the hallway that, uh, that Michael J. Fox dances with, uh, you know, who's, who's oh, with, right. Yeah. I forgot. yeah. The this most still... stereotype break dancer <laughs> right. outfit. Like this is how I always come to school. When you, <laughs> when you start getting, when you start getting to movies this small, I feel like there's a lot of people who get cast because they know so-and-so, right. I don't feel mm -hmm. like this was probably 
open to a, a diverse group of actors that might have been out there. They probably kind of said, hey, I work with so and so. But in the, and this is all speculation. But I feel like sure. a movie this small maybe is just people they know. And unfortunately, there just wasn't a lot of diversity. In and that is it? Pool. And is it like also? I mean, I'm sure they weren't saying, "Well, we think this is what Nebraska looks like." <laughs> yeah. I have a little bit Maybe. of that too. It's like Maybe, you could definitely defend would, it that way. You'd be wrong, I, but you could. That, that would be that would be an <laughs> argument that I think is disproven by the entirety of the movie. Like, right. <laughs> yes, they didn't really care about what Nebraska looks like right. for anything no. else. Why yeah, it's like, it looks so much <laughs> like so Southern California. Yeah, and yeah. and they have the beavers. Like, what? No, no one in Nebraska no, lives near beavers. woods and streams no like, they wouldn't no. have called themselves right. the beavers it's yeah. a great i definitely it's felt like that joke. was a yeah i felt like that was definitely a sexual joke right that was was it yes oh yes oh, yeah. absolutely absolutely yeah. yes that's oh you, you I, like, I just saw it as like oh you're lame like the dragons are cool beavers are lame that's what I, how i took it yeah that's I, how i, I took I, it too i read a little bit Perverts. uh from the Sorry, directors yeah. I, I read a little bit of interviews with the director rod uh daniel and he it sounded like he had a little bit of a pressure to bring up the adultness of it because they regret that uh that boob scene with Lori griffin's character pamela um it, they he regretted making it so it was uncomfortable to shoot mm -hmm. and he didn't want to he felt like he didn't add anything to the movie mm -hmm. and i feel like maybe there was a little bit of pressure to bring in those kind of those subtle more adultish so, type the sex jokes scene the sex scene between michael j fox and Lori griffin is hysterical if you let that yeah. if you let that be funny I, that is really funny yeah. But like otherwise, man, that's uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like they, the. I hated that part actually. Was they said they didn't need the actual showing of the Lori Griffin. That's what he was really saying. Mm -hmm. He's like, you mm -hmm. really didn't because she was uncomfortable doing it. Everybody yeah, was I mean, uncomfortable she, set doing it. She could have come on to him without any, without disrobing or anything. It was yeah, really yeah. unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. right. Her, but yeah. it was pressure at the time. It's like you, you're you're making a movie aimed at teenagers. Then you got to have this. You well, got to yeah, have your titillation. How do you, how do you right? make it very clear that they had sex? And keep it PG thirteen, right? Right. Yeah. Then, right. Oh. That's hard to do. I mean, I've never made a movie, so I can't say for sure. But in the eighties, it just felt like we were more willing to go. Well, that then that's the job. So yeah, yeah you got to come in here and get in your panties. How you feel about that? No, oh, well, I've done uh, five Porky's okay. movies. Sure, whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 At the same time, there's tons of things in this movie that don't pay off. They expect you, the audience, to get what they're getting at. Mm -hmm. right. And I also like that, although... I really feel like if you're going to have a man wet his pants, you got to show us the wet pants. Yes. That was the one thing. Yes. Yeah. So you, you, like you're, a, you're more uh, of the you're more of the like, Frank and Beans kind of thing. You want to see it like they did in uh, yeah, not, not like the Mary. very last shot of the movie. No, I, I oh, really okay. don't want to see those. Frank <laughs> <and Beans. laughs> to right, me, well, let's talk about the let's talk about the final uh, the 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 big uh, <laughs> reveal, the big question. Mark. What does Snope say about this thing? Do we have any kind well, of record on that? Here's here's what I found that kind of blew my mind. Here is a screenshot of the uncrop scene because. Even when I was watching it this time, I'm like, oh, yeah, the dude don't totally like first he he uh, he has his pants down. Then he pulls his penis out, flops it forward, but at the same time and then pulls his shirt over it and then zips up. Like I'll be like, on. Yeah. yeah. So I I couldn't see anything. OK, so I, I watched that and I kind of zoomed in and did my mm -hmm. forensic stuff and <laughs> zoom in. You know, so my yeah, my, my skepticism says, OK, what other possibilities are they that maybe I'm seeing something I'm, I'm putting pieces together that aren't there. And I said, what's some of the other things that could possibly be going on here? I'm like, OK, everybody was sitting down. Sometimes people sit down, they unzip their pants and they get up. They're like, oh, no, you know, they, they pull their pants up and button up and everything. And I was like, is that yeah. what's going on here or is there a floppy penis there? I couldn't see the floppy penis. It was so low quality. If you if you I'm tell you. I'm that's gonna need a floppy. Official. If that, if you tell yourself that's a floppy penis, you will see the floppy penis. Okay, yeah, that's but what I'm saying. Yes, <laughs> the uncropped scene um, shows that it's a woman, actually. Oh. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. really? Right. Okay. Yes, I just put it in our uh, in our Discord chat there. I got. I hope I just put it in a Discord chat. And didn't put it in a different Discord chat. Oh yeah, but, look at uh, that. Well, is it? Your, we, yeah, that seems you, to be. You blurred the face that, out, right? That seems to be. No, a, I didn't. I didn't blur the face out. Whoever put this uh, video together blurred the face out. But we see her. Uh, I'll give you a link to the the whole video. Yeah, but yeah, this was kind of the key, the key moment. They show this whole scene, the uncropped version of the scene. And it's like, oh, well, yeah, it's clearly a woman. And they show her um, earlier. 
I'm this goes to show you a bunch right of internet guys. sleuths are always looking at group shots, looking for penises. That's when it goes to prove. I am blown away right now because <laughs> until until this moment, like I saw, I saw what I saw. Yeah, I, saw I know. I saw. Same here. I was like, oh man, that's clearly it. That's well, clearly I was I I never seen it organically. I only went back and looked at it because somebody said, "There's a penis here," and I'm like, "Okay, I'm gonna look for the penis." All right there's yeah. there it is. Yeah. There's the Waldo. I see it. Yeah, there's the Waldo. There's, there's the, the Waldo. Waldo. I, I found Waldo. I, Red and white. Yeah, stripe. this is a real lesson. <laughs> there's there's a lesson here. I love this. There's a lesson. You see what you want to see when you see it until somebody yeah, broadens yeah. the perspective, and then you're like, "Well, there's, shit." There's very Freud, like a very a very much a Freud thing here. Like, uh, nope. Sometimes a uh, sometimes a white pair of panties is just a white pair of panties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it's people who are in tight pants, and when they're sitting, it hurts to have it yeah. bundled up. You just one button. So when you stand you up, get up, you're like, oh, does, shit, I got to button them. Yeah. yeah, It's not like that answers the other question of why are you sitting there with your pants unbuttoned. But, <laughs> I, but, but I mean, you're probably yeah. there for a long time. These shoots are really long. A, a person was yeah. probably there for like hours. It's like, we, when are we going to freaking do this thing where we jump up? Is the star here yet? Where's yeah. Michael J. Fox? Yeah, but like, see, there's on, that, but that's you filling in the blanks again. See, and there's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. that, but that's what we do. We go, well, we don't know this information. So I'm going to fill in all these blanks. We, right. For all we know, she did it on purpose as a joke. She could yeah. have done it because she was sitting there and it was hurting. Didn't, maybe didn't know that this was a take that was going to be kept. Right? Yeah. And and the fact that the cropped, the uncropped scene is shows so much more of the crowd. It's like the producer or the editors. There's no doubt that is that is center yeah. frame. <laughs> Right. Yeah, they probably Buttons. they probably zoomed in in post. I mean, they probably, they probably zoomed yeah. in, but it's like they didn't zoom in enough to where they covered it. They just zoomed in enough to where they put well, the focus admit, of the scene lose, on something you, else. But yeah, you'd yeah. lose Papa you Howard dad. if you did that. You yeah. lose the dad, yes. But still, yeah. it's like you know, at this point, do you say, "Oh God, how are we going to get some more extras together and reshoot just that scene?" Just to, so we have a, a different take know. on it, because we need See. we need everything else in that scene. We don't need that. And I wonder if an, if you have an editor who's like, I wonder if they'll right. catch it. We should leave it in and yeah. see. I'm yeah, just tired. It's the editor's girlfriend. Like, oh, dude, I'm, I totally put your uh, <laughs> yeah. I put your bit in there. It's yeah. gonna be in. Put your yeah. put your V pick in there. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Go Beavers. <laughs> Go Beavers. <laughs> What's funny is one of my Twitter posts I wrote before I found this video of it being a woman. So it's it's. <laughs> I have two Twitter posts. Thank putting God. the but, putting the beaver in beavers. Yeah, mm. that's right. Uh, yeah. Nope, nope. But uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I I think this is a good time for me to try to coin a phrase. Do it. I I've been it. thinking about this since I watched this movie last but night. Trying to make fetch happen. I'm gonna try. <laughs> right. I'm gonna try. I just want to. I want to know what your guys take take us on this. So Styles, this is a character that is uh, stereotypical. We've seen this character in other movies. Mm -hmm. um, this character is like a. A very different but similar to Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Mm, and okay. I'm I have decided that I want to call this the Manic Metro Guy Friend. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so he's the shows... manic metro guy friend. Whoa, this guy whoa. shows <laughs> this guy shows up wearing sunglasses when no one else is wearing sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is always got he's always got some hustle going on, but he looks so relaxed mm -hmm, at yeah. all times. Mm -hmm. It's cool, he's, man. He's exceptionally metrosexual. Like he's metrosexual before anybody even thought about that. Mm -hmm. And uh and he's fun. He's always fun. The, mm -hmm. Like he's never not having fun. What's your problem? Why are you upset right now? Why aren't we supposed to be having fun? Mm -hmm. Like this character, it, it just like I am drawn to this character. I want to see more movies with this exact character. What's the some kind of wonderful trope with what's her name? Because that's what oh, Boof uh, is. That's Boof. Andy, Andy, Alex. Yeah. yeah. And God, that movie does it so much better because the um they make Leah Thompson's Leah Thompson's character so um attractive emotionally or personality wise they make her a desirable person i mean mm -hmm, right, we still right. uh, we but all we just... all still had a crush on uh mary stewart masterson anyway right right so, from the get-go scott you're not just talking about betty and veronica like no that's, not like that like it's no, more no. Uh, the, the way it was the way it was in this movie it was like booth was clearly the more i don't like the word homely but she was like the the normal girl, the plain, yeah. the plain girl. I mean, it's hard girl to next, even say the that. The girl next she's, door. Yeah. yeah, but from the get go, they just did it wrong. Like if they wanted you to really say, um, "Oh, wow!" I, you know, I didn't even think about Boof being a potential relationship for McFly. I know you're going to think about Scott, <laughs> the first Scott. Uh, 
they make her so attractive and sweet and kind of perfect from the get-go that you're like yeah why even bother with this blonde woman who's not even attractive uh right uh so you're kind of to talking, the audience yeah so you're kind of talking about a pygmalion thing Kind right? of? Like, of course I am. Yes, well, I was thinking that from the start, Randy. Yeah. Right? No, I'm talking. <laughs> I'm to trying that. to figure out what Scott was asking for. Yeah, yeah. No, but, I, you, I you, think. Yeah, no, I see what you're just saying. Like the you have this, and I think the some kind of wonderful is the one that gets it closest to the right. the quote unquote ugly duckling who becomes a swan. Um, even though, again, nothing ugly duckling about Boof, but. But it's the you want the you want the audience to say to to be also be focused on the desirable um, blonde girl and not see the person standing right next to the main character is who he should be with until she reveals herself as like um, the 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 Sandra D another bad example uh, where, where she says oh I'll be slutty and then I'll get John Travolta yay yeah but, yeah yeah but, but you're, you're right you're right there's a that is the thing we're talking about her character always stays. Her character always stays true to her character, though, right? She never changes. He's wanting she something bigger. She never does. Boof never changes. And you don't yeah. want... And, and I think that that's a problematic thing. You don't want... It certainly wouldn't work now of, to, like, say, oh, this this plain girl had to get all gussied up for the guy to finally yeah. notice her. You don't want a movie like that today. And that shouldn't work. It wouldn't work today. I mean, it really is all about living in a small town and not appreciating how wonderful it is and wanting something bigger and better and not seeing how wonderful the small town is until you start mm -hmm. getting a little taste of, you know, celebrity. And then it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like who I am. I don't like what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. you know, backpedaling, come back and going, okay, I appreciate it. Now. She's, appreciate this movie, it. like, it's, I think Boof. it's a mistake. This movie has Boof all over our main character yeah. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And and we, and it's Boof. at first, we're supposed to believe he doesn't really notice or care. Mm -hmm. And they're, I'm just they're like, childhood friends. So he doesn't see her like that, right? Sure. But I'm just like, what were, did humans write this? Because, like, right. yeah. Every boy I knew <laughs> as a teenager would have died to have yeah. that oh, kind of given two toes, my two girl. left toes for my move, two left toes pre-show. Scotts would say mm -hmm. it's a pre-show, mm -hmm. um, right. but they did everything. You know, the, it's kind of funny because they did just about everything except put glasses on her. That finally shows how pretty she yeah. is when they take the glasses off. That's kind of the one trope they didn't lean on with uh, with Boof is I, the. Mm. Oh, I did like I how didn't they didn't realize how pretty you were. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did like they, they didn't spend too much time. This is only an hour and a half movie. They didn't do, do yeah. too much to, uh, working with what happened to Michael J. Fox's mom. Why was he destabilized? Why is he struggling so much to understand any of that, those things? And mm -hmm. yeah, so, it's true. yeah, yeah it's, I could have sworn we saw the mom. Uh, no, uh, no mom well, answers. Not, no mom at all. Like I, I, you know, if you would have told me, oh yeah, it's you know, mom and dad sitting at the table and and blah blah blah. No, it's like we don't get we don't get mom at all in this situation. They, they stab a little bit person. of that with Mick's character talking about shooting, uh, shooting her. She was, you know, he, she was uh, robbing the chickens and he shot her. And so I was like, which, a, ooh, which I, I think dude, it's just a dog breath. joke. Right, you're right. a dog, and therefore your mom was a dog. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, is that? That's where that ends. Okay. <laughs> well, she's dead too, so it's kind of like yeah, I think exactly. that's the overarching stab. Your yeah, mom's dead. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's a great like, bit uh, of for an hour and a half movie. I can't believe they they do that stupid slow mo build up twice in the <laughs> opening scene with it leads up to and a missed end. basket. <laughs> well, the, the last one does lead to a, a successful <sighs> basket, but they do it twice yeah. in the beginning and twice it. I fell for it because I was like, yeah. Oh, they make it. The second one's gonna go in, and now I fell for that one again. Damn it! The yeah. very beginning of this movie is just credits on a black screen with a heart beating, and I was I was really <laughs> disliking that, and it put me in the wrong place. Yeah, because right. this is so, like a horror movie. Yeah. So like, I just like, could you just go back and fix the beginning? Like, the, there's all sorts of things you could put there. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I get that, but I, I look. There's this movie is um, man, it's a relic in some ways. We'll, we'll play some sound clip. I have one clip in particular that is a, Brian kind of already referenced in his song, but we're going to play it, even though I find it kind of abhorrent, but it is yeah. so emblematic. Not age well. No, yeah. yeah, but I find it so emblematic of what what was said back then. Like it was yeah. so, yeah. it was so flippant and so nothing. It's such a throwaway line, like nobody mm -hmm. cared. And I remember mm -hmm. being that age going, well, yeah, that's what you'd say. It's just, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. And now I don't feel that way at all. So uh, I will. I will say there was one laugh out loud moment for me, and that was uh, the first time you see Scott and Booth walking home from school, and I couldn't remember if it was Styles or Styles Buddy, but it was the convertible that convertible orange car 
the guy pulls up next to him uh, alongside them and he goes hey how's it going and they don't respond he goes ah oh, nice talking to you and then he drives <laughs> off and I, for whatever reason it's a throwaway minute but for yeah. whatever reason that just cracked me up yeah i like that one. i I knew this movie going in. I've seen this movie a million times. There was not a lot. Every every line there, were, I was just miming right along. Yeah, everything. Really? Yeah, how, second, second time seeing it for me. Oh, really? Wow. Not that's not not many. Second and final. <laughs> this is probably I have no reason to watch it ever again. It's probably six or seven, but it's because we had oh, the wow. VHS tape and it just got worn out at my house. Mm, yeah, and we yeah. didn't even own it. It was a copy. You know, somebody had, somebody had, my friend at the <laughs> yeah. prison. Property, property of action video or it, something. Like that. Yeah, it was one of the, I think I've told the story on the show, but I had a friend who was the son of the warden of this, of the Utah prison, the yeah. Utah state prison. And he had, I don't know how he had access to this stuff. I assume it was through because his dad was the warden and there was weird stuff. I don't know, but he would get, um, you know, copies of uh, Rage of the Lost Ark and, and <laughs> these things that were never on video uh, till much later. But uh, you know they they would come out like a year or two two years later, and you'd pay eighty bucks or something like that for those movies back yeah. then. But he would get these like bootleg copies of stuff, bring them to school, and pass them out like drugs. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I got you. I got you fixed here. Yeah, and they all look uh, like shit. They were taken from like video camera in theaters. Like it was bad. We're talking the eighties here, right. but I mm-hmm. loved that because I'm pretty sure I got Teen Wolf that way, Time Bandit, all the Star Wars, all the Indiana Jones that we had that mm-hmm. to that point. And we would take him home, and we thought we were kings of the hill, man. Just had all this shit. And he probably, I don't know what happened to him. He, I'm sure he got into worse stuff later. You'd have to, right? You can't. This is a gateway drug. Right. right. You're, you're right. <laughs> you, start, you start just plagiarizing uh, videos from the, from the jail. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But, um, but this movie got a lot of play in my house. For some reason, my sisters really liked it. And um, I don't well, think I do. I, I'm, I'm good, though, now. I don't need to. I don't need to watch this again. I'm that's, good. It's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting you say your sisters really liked it because like this movie insists that all of these teenagers around this freak would would be like really liking it. Like it insists yeah. that the the guy the weirdo directing the play would like him being a wolf. And it's mm-hmm. like I, I I can go with it, but it's really hard for me to, you know, like to exist in a reality while watching this movie, you know? Yeah, like, that's fair. Because in reality, yeah, no, there would be people who hated him and persecuted him and, you know, tried to, you know, call For sure. Or, like, be grossed out by him. Like, uh, like yeah. oh, no, I can't believe we're letting this guy who's got this this horrible disease uh, around us in school. What if that? What if that's contagious, werewolfism? Yeah, yeah. What if he well, bites that, me? You know? Right. Mm-hmm. Matt Adler, the Lewis character, like the, the younger, the underclassman who was kind of hanging out with him and stuff, he... Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, he kind of he projected some of that stuff, and of course, uh, uh, Mark Arnold Mick, who just absolutely hated him and all of his buddies. But yeah, yeah. otherwise, it was just like, sure, it's normal, it's it's fine. Mm-hmm. Matt Adler fine. is our uh, four time film sack person. Oh, now. Yeah. one of the other uh, movies. A lot of these are are first timers, but Matt Adler we've seen in Dream a Little Dream and Flight of the Navigator and The Day After Tomorrow. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Day After Tomorrow. He was. Um... Uh, the truck guy. Uh, that's why his face is familiar. <laughs> that uh, yeah. Well, anyway, he's he's yeah. He's been in a ton of stuff. It feels like he he and uh, who's the other guy we talked about? Mark Arnold. They both had. Well, I guess Mark oh, yeah. Holton too. They they both had stuff. The poor women yeah. in this movie though. Lori Griffin, the blonde. Susan Urs City, the boof. Just kind of stop working. They just like yeah. Like where to see? They here. ended up both of them stopped working around ninety seven, and um. I don't know why that is. is it, women in Hollywood, they get it to a certain age, and I feel like they just don't get the chances the men who age do. Because look at the rest of these ugly dudes. Like this. <laughs> ugly dudes. Like Styles. Well, it's funny because. He's in everything. Yeah. He's in tons of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's oh. funny that, uh, that we, <laughs> Mark Holton, you're saying, is a lot of procedural dramas and stuff. I think his IMDb photo looks like a, a small child wearing a fake mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> I can't Love unsee it. it now. Oh man, <laughs> um, Styles, Jerry Levine, yeah. that guy mostly directs now. He directed 14 yeah. episodes of Hawaii Five O, an episode of Chicago Med. He's on the other side of the camera mostly these days, but yeah. uh, that's yeah. the way to do it. Elizabeth Gorsey, who played the uh, the magic hat lingerie wearing wearing lady, she was uh, she was in Footloose, I believe. But uh, yeah, I used to have a crush oh. on her. I was like, oh, she's she's super cute. Why don't I say have she a is, word? It's just bizarre, like. 
here, everybody at this party is dressed except for the people rolling around, writhing around on the floor yeah. covered with shaving cream or whipped cream or whatever. But she's like in a lingerie top. Yeah. It, it just, uh, I feel like they, I feel like they paid for her services wanna... to come over. There must have been, well, there must have been, she uh, shows up with styles like all, all, uh, dressed to the yeah, nines. And, for some and of the how games. did, how did Styles take over the party? He's like begging to get in, just bringing a cake. Right. And then right. halfway through the and night, all of he's, sudden, like he's master of ceremonies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that guy I, did. The, the girl in fetish wear must, yeah. there must have been <laughs> things that were shot and not used around that party. There must right. have been more of that. Yeah. And like they had to keep these shots in. And there was one girl in fetish wear in, yeah. in these shots, whereas the ones that they edited out probably had lots of people in their underwear or well, whatever mm -hmm. let's like ask dunaway so dunaway are there are there uh, extra scenes on the criterion collection <laughs> <of the record? laughs> blu-ray that you undoubtedly have uh, uh, no this only lives on vhs where it will always live for me no special <laughs> editions what you got is what you got mm, final cut okay. is the final yeah. cut yeah i could see that um it says that my favorite trivia in here is this one uh in spain the film was titled de pelo en pencho which is an expression used to say it is an expression used to say quote hairy chest male there you okay go. Yep. yeah that's oh, what i consider a, a teen wolf yeah yeah, yeah. Right. don't know why they did that uh also this is a good one rod daniel the director says in an interview quote somewhere is uh somewhere in a vault is about an hour of the most embarrassing sports footage ever taken unquote <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm sure yeah i would oh, love it poor, poor Michael i would love to see some of that like yeah yeah just put it out there man where is it like him falling on the court or, or uh but i mean his his other physical comedy is so great when he goes running down the hallway looking <gasps> for the bathroom after the yes. guy mm -hmm. said you know is wash is cleaning the other bathroom won't let him in his combination of tripping sliding falling and yes. running is absolutely amazing and it's an unbroken cut it's brilliant yeah, yeah. It's, it's so amazing i love yeah. that scene that really just shows you where he, my god I'm like, he's going to get yeah. hurt, and he's not going to be able to do the back to the yeah. future. You better be careful. Yeah, how exactly. do you, how do you do that handstand without falling off on that turn? Right, right, That's right. Cool. I think they had, I think they had bars that were holding on to. Like, was, yeah. I was looking bars for bars different. or something holding them on the truck. Yeah. Also, yeah. the video was super sped up. Like, yeah. There, yes. There, yeah. Uh, it was a, a little annoying how this movie couldn't decide on whether it was going to go <laughs> super speed or slow mo. Super speed, slow mo. We one yeah. or the other is cool, and we just don't know. Yeah, that was a, that was weird, right? Well, it's a weird choice to do that because yeah. it just makes me go, "All right, stop." <laughs> I don't like sped up film Every anyway. Time. The only person that's ever done it right is George Miller. Everybody else does it wrong. I don't know what their problem is, but don't speed up your film. Uh, Scott yeah. Howard, Michael J. Fox's character, his house was located on the exact same block as uh, George McFly's 1955 and 1955 Lorraine Baines house from Back to the Future. Really? Baines oh, house. Great. Yeah, that's cool, right? And uh, felt cool. really, really like that uh, Tom Hanks movie we saw a couple months ago. The Burbs? The Burbs, yeah. Felt like the same yeah, Tom area, Hanks too. <laughs> you don't even... Dunaway, don't talk to me Dunaway has strong feelings. <laughs> About Listen, that. Dunaway, I've forgiven him. He he uh you know <laughs> he hated that Warren Zevon song. I'm, I'm okay uh, hating him, but uh, if you're forgiving him on that one. Yeah, but, you've come uh, around. You've I'm come just around asking that. you to have sympathy for people who come into things when in the wrong place. <laughs> right. And it's easy to do. Uh how about this? Did anybody see the MTV thing, the twenty eleven uh uh, oh, the the series, the, the TV series, yeah, the I, serious I watched a little show. bit of it, yeah, yeah, much more serious take, of course, right? Uh, was it? Yeah. So was it good? Like people liked it. Oh, it was it was CW good, right? I okay. mean, it's kind of like yeah, it's kind of like one of those dramas. It was good in, in that way. All right, it's very serious take. So Fair so right. were there so because this is not that at all, right? This is very no, goofy no. And, you know, there's there's supposed to be serious like reflection on people's lives, but it's not that serious. It's mostly joking around. I, I right. just don't know if I could ever take that seriously. They pretty much, they pretty much just uh, they pretty much just stole the title. I mean, it, it it has very little to any connective tissue. I don't, there may have been a few nods here or there, but yeah, I don't think anything is. Yeah, and isn't it mostly yeah. like um, it's kind of Buffy ish, right? A lot, a lot of Buffy. right, right, yeah. Okay, yeah. all you right, think of like Buffy, that kind of thing. Interesting. But a little more serious, not quite, not quite as silly as buffy which i love the silliness of buffy don't think that that's a bad thing oh i love some i love some silly yeah. buffy this yeah. but this did remind me of buffy the vampire slayer quite a bit yeah yeah like i got that there's a lot of the a lot of the yeah. same qualities yeah sure get that sure. sure sure um 
what grossed me out the most? Would you like to guess, oh, everybody? Gross. I wrote two down. Um, the uh, the dog whistle. Are you going to put that back on the shelf after it's been sitting in that kid's <laughs> mouth? And he, he dangled it out of, out of his mouth for quite a while. But yeah. uh, uh, second, uh, my my higher pick is picking out hairs out of a high school sink. Oh, my gosh. Uh, barehanded. Dude. Wow. And, and not wadding yeah. up a paper towel to do it. <laughs> so I would like to congratulate you on getting third and second choices because okay. you did his the first, hair is second it's just dripping sweat the dripping sweat uh oh you're so the, close so I'll, I'll just tell you since we're that close yeah, yeah. he at one point michael j fox is standing there talking to i think the coach and his right. shirt is off completely and it's not right. wolf form he's just in oh, michael yeah. j fox form yeah, in the bathroom yeah uh-huh. and at one point he rubs rules. he rubs his hand yeah. under his armpit <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. And then rubs yeah, his face scene. with it. Immediately goes up to his forehead and rubs his forehead <laughs> and his eyes yeah. from his armpit to his eyes. Freaking, that's disgusting, dude. <laughs> what are you doing? And I know he's what? just acting uh, and he's probably covered in spray water and I get it, but come we on. We call it acting, Scott. And, and aren't teenage boys disgusting? Like, like the movie was kind of like making that point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like he's going through the, the very special puberty. And he's just, you know, he's just right. disgusting at all. You know, his special, nails, really, his nails yeah. are so gross oh, yeah. when he's a yeah. wolf. Yeah, that was gross. Also, just the idea of wearing that hair and running up and down a court for the stunt guy or him, just mm-hmm. that's foul. Mm-hmm. That thing stinks. Mm-hmm. You know it stinks. You know, that's like if you're, uh, who is the dude from um, uh, Peter, whatever, played Ch- Chewbacca. I can't think of his name. Oh, Mayhew. Peter Mayhew. Mayhew. Yes. You know that guy. Half the reason he got confined to a wheelchair is because he stunk so bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's terrible to say. But he was <laughs> just like this, dis- that disgusting fake, you know, synthetic hair yeah. stuff on you on set. Well, those lights all the time, yeah. foul. Yeah. That's foul. There's no way that was comfortable or good. And there's no way these girls would be hugging all up on him after a game. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Did you guys watch the animated series? No. There no, I didn't realize there was one until I was looking at the Wikipedia page. Tell yeah. me more. This this feels like it's made for an animated series. So yes, yeah. I want to see this. I would see it. Where is it? Is this the thing I can do? Very, uh, very. I, th- I think I watched a few uh, on YouTube or something. But I uh, say Pluto TV looks YouTube, like it yeah. also has it. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious. I about watched it. a few episodes on on YouTube, but yeah, it's on Pluto. It looks like as well. Uh, let's see. Is it just called Teen Wolf? Or is it something Teen else? Teen Wolf. Yep. Teen Wolf. The okay. animated series. Remember, like every year, they would be like, "Hey, coming this uh, fall yes. is the is the movie or TV show that you love so much." But now we've animated it. Mm. Woo-hoo. Oh, the Teen twenty uh, the twenty eleven things on Hulu, but then they made a movie last year. I didn't even hear about that. Teen Wolf the movie. Oh, I didn't realize. Was that either. it based on this this TV series? Yeah. Yeah, it looks okay. like it's the same okay. people coming I back. Missed that. I, I don't know how they're all still teens. That was 2011. Jeez. Right. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Brian Dudaway, let's go. Yes. Um, best animated TV shows that were based on movies. The Fonz. Oh, oh movies. Oh. Like I said, TV show. Well, no, no, no. The, yeah, the TV show is animated. It was based on right. a movie. Um, and I, 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 would say, I would say if you're being genuine, Clerks. Oh, I oh, loved Clerks. It only lasted a yeah. freaking year, but I loved it. Was so good. I always want to reserve the real Ghostbusters. It's like the king of this category. That, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. For, That's forgetting that. The best. Uh, like, did you have yeah. did you have any? Because when I was a kid, uh, there was a Back to the Future series that I saw. I didn't care for it. Is that something? Oh, really? I don't remember that? I don't care for that now. No, okay. you don't care for it on Kin Concept. You don't care for it. Lame. Okay. No, I'm just I don't. I don't. I never <laughs> seen that, so I can't say. <laughs> um. It was so a wait. Karate Kid. Animated series. Animated right. series. Uh, was it based on the, but it was based on the Machio or was it based on the um, the recent one, the Jackie Chan thing? No, Probably no, Machio, right? It was right? based about, on the Machio? Okay. I'm talking about like 30 years the ago. The 80s, okay. Yeah. I think, like for said, some I reason, think... I'm envisioning a, a, but there was a Jackie Chan animated show though, wasn't there? There was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's Jackie what Chan I'm, Adventures that's what I'm, or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm, that's what I'm yeah. visualizing. Okay. Yeah, I cannot um, there's think. There's only a few that, yeah, go ahead. I care for it. And that that was the go like you said, the real Ghostbusters, not that other thing. That's that, a good that is another good one. Yeah, that's that's probably just the best one overall. Then there's Beetlejuice, but really just a different vibe than the movie, even though it had a lot right. of the same characters. But yeah. Oh yeah, the Robocop animated series was so different than the movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that that's true. There's one for you. Because that was super yeah. toned down. I mean, I I couldn't yeah. even believe they did it. When they had I'm you Alba know, I'm eighty seven or whatever that movie came out, I was, you know, teenager and 
into edgy things or whatever. And that movie was so hardcore. And then you see action figures, uh, toys, and then uh, an animated series come out for RoboCop. And I'm like, are you kidding me? (laughs) This this is like saying, oh, go get a Happy Meal at McDonald's. The, the, (laughs) um, you know, some possession movie uh, or something is in there. Right. We're going to totally forget about all that drug stuff that... uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's getting spread out on the streets. Uh. Yeah. Oh, my favorite. Okay, I have a favorite. I just found it. I was looking at a list. Uh, Rambo, The Force of Freedom. I thought that was what? terrible okay. and oh. awesome. Cannot, I never cannot saw approve, that. Cannot approve because they didn't draw Rambo to look like Sly Stallone. Why? No, they Why didn't. Doesn't he look like Sly Stallone? He, I mean, oh, he really? looks he like a long... Said, he, he probably said no. He looks like him, kind of. I mean, it's not great, but that's how we did stuff back then. I'm Googling to see what this looks like because I can't. Yeah, I, I don't, this I don't is remember Native America. America. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but look oh, at this. I do remember this cartoon? They oh, had yeah, the right. worst well. villains. Yeah. Listen to these guys: General Warhawk, Sergeant Havoc. He was played by Peter Cullen, by the way. So Optimus Prime in there. But wasn't Warhawk one of them? Yeah, Peter General Prince. Warhawk. He, well, no, he okay, wasn't okay. in the movie, was he? I okay. don't think so. Well, that's not Warhawk, <laughs> the main general guy, is it? No, no, no. He's not the main general guy. No, but I okay. thought there was a. All right, go ahead. I don't go think ahead. so. Gripper, Nomad, Mad Dog, Jerk Face, Gripper. There's a guy named Jerk Face in there, dude. Great. Anyway, face. if you ever get a chance to see it, called and they run out of you. it is garbage. <laughs> it is garbage <laughs> bullshit. Is, this movie. This thing is borderline <laughs> Rob Liefeld. Oh, uh, big time. Watching this. Big time. And they don't show nipples. That's the other thing I remember about it. Wow. <laughs> this, oh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> this ran a lot longer than I thought. Yeah. Or maybe it didn't run long. Oh, I, I take that back. There's at least 48 episodes, but I think that was all season one. That's how you did cartoons back. I then. show Wikipedia shows 65 episodes of this thing. Yeah, which is which is a season and a half, right? <laughs> well, let's see. Because <laughs> yeah, right, they were yeah. making one a week. Yeah, um, are, they, are they like shorts, like three, three? No, per they're like filmation. Minute, uh, Remember really filmation okay. doing He Man? Right. It was like yeah. you had a cartoon a week. It's like that's the reason why they halfway through the cartoon every week they would go. I have the power for five minutes. Can I watch this somewhere, dude? Because I want to see these. Let's see. Can I? I see? remember you think this. You want to see, but you really don't. <laughs> I know, dude. It is one of those things, right? I think I get more excited. Like Jan person, I went and downloaded all those because I want to yeah, see those. Yeah. But I'm probably not going to make it past one or two because, of course, not. Uh, oh, here it is. Freedom. Um, it is available. Uh, okay, Just Watch says you can't get them anywhere, but you uh, YouTube has maybe all. Oh no, no, no. Okay, some ch- sketchy site called trackit.tv says they have all the episodes. Track it. Track uh, it. Interesting. It. Bop I'm, it. Flip I'm it. A- <laughs> <laughs> I, you say that. I'm hearing a Def Leppard uh, song break. <laughs> Track, Track it. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm hearing. Uh, well, anyway. I mean, we got, oh, uh, IMDb photo of the week. We're giving it to Harvey Vernon, the old man Clark at the, at the liquor store, yeah. uh, because they straight up just used his photo from the movie where he gets yeah. zoomed in on uh, looking pissed. Uh, uh, looks that's great. Love that guy loved everything he, he was in. I can't believe they didn't okay. use him more in this movie. He is, he is the guy who runs the only liquor store in town, the only place to get kegs of beer. And you're telling me he doesn't know that seven different teenagers have gotten kegs of beer mm-hmm. from right. him for yeah, the yeah. same party. Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure he about knows. that because were they all teenagers or were they? And he's, and he's the Ben Stein you ordered on Wish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. But Timu Ben Stein, everybody. Congratulations. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Uh, yes, but all those kids look so much older. I'm shocked he even asked for. <laughs> yeah, I thought all the other kids were adults because I thought that's what they were doing. They were yeah. crashing the party. They were high schoolers crashing the the college party is what I thought. But yeah. what do I know? House parties like that scare me. Now, I don't about go- being wall to wall people like that. I'm like, get off me. Get yeah, off me. I don't go to oh, liquor okay. stores, but do you ever been to one where it was like a kindly old man behind the counter in a sweater? I don't think that's a thing. I don't I, think those I just, put, I just gave you a picture of her, this Harvey Vernon guy. And I yeah. want you to tell me that this is not Daniel Craig in 20 years. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Dude. <laughs> good call. Good call. <laughs> Holy shit. You're not I, uh I did look deep into the cast list, but I didn't realize Doug Savant. Uh, was a character named Brad probably oh he was one of the, he was one of the Brad. basketball players Doug Savant was the uh the the gay neighbor on uh, Desperate Melrose Housewives. Place. oh 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 <laughs> he Sorry. was a hus- he was a heterosexual husband on Desperate Housewives yeah. but he's oh, right. Yes. right 
Right, yeah. right, 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 right. He's the one that everybody thought was going to be the big star after Nino, or after Melrose. That was going to be Melrose, he was going to yeah. be huge, and he didn't really get that huge. And then uh, Gregory Itzen uh, was the English teacher, and he uh, he was that bad president from the second season of Twenty Four. Uh, <laughs> the the uh, uh, Charles Lo- uh, President Logan before oh, uh, um, before Palmer. Uh, right. Yeah. The uh, yes. That's why he looks so familiar to me. That was driving me crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was young, dude. Wow. He was young, though. Well, I guess yeah. 85. Age we were all young. the best of us. Ugh. Greg, uh, Doug Savant started working when he was, turned 21. Like, he turned 21 and just, boom, Hollywood. Yeah, whole Hollywood, life. And he got, he got a lot of jobs. Yeah, he's still working. Still got shit going on. Well done. You're a real savant there, Doug. You, uh, you done it. Uh, oh, also, Jeff Loeb was an associate producer and Jeff writer. Loeb, Batman, he co- co-wrote and writer. it. We yeah. did talk about yep. this, didn't yep. we? Okay, yeah. Yeah. he co-wrote the yeah. damn thing. Uh, Loeb and Weissman, man, I don't understand oh, yeah, we how they okay. how they like fell off because they had they had some good stuff mm-hmm. in this time mm-hmm. frame. And yeah, I just, mean, like, I Loeb know. still does. You know, I guess he's he was executive producer of the uh, uh, Dare- a lot of Marvel stuff. Yeah, yeah Daredevil the, series and all that. Daredevil, Netflix, the Jessica Jones, Hit Monkey, which was great. If you yeah. have not seen the Hit Monkey, I haven't seen it yet. On Hulu, it's uh, it's it's mm, up until What If and uh, X Men '97. I'd call it the best Marvel animated thing up to that point. Wow, that's one of one of the best. Far from me to criticize anybody's name because who the hell am I? I'm nobody. But uh, student number one, Jay Footlick, you win. (laughs) Hold on, Tarantino's just asking if he can. uh, Could we put him put us uh, put him in touch with Jay Footlick? Yeah, sure. Doing uh, Doing live action movie that sounds great. Live action. Uh, is he available? He's still available. <laughs> He's still around. Will you let me he lick his face? Iron Eagle? How did I miss him uh, Iron Eagle? Oh, rest in peace, uh, like... Lou Gossett Jr., by the way. Passed away yeah. yesterday. The oh, girl yeah. in the the girl in the beaver costume uh, got a credit, and her name is Tana Her. Hmm. And I just think Tana Her is, Tana I don't know, it just sounds That's like a name. command. But fun. Fun the beaver, the beaver mascot changes from the beginning of the movie to the end, and I want yeah. to know why. I want to know oh, like, the oh, backstory. I, uh, no, yeah, it was a wolf. I think that they Wolfhead. they it was a beaver at the beginning, and then once Scott started being popular as the wolf, they said, "Oh, let's make it a wolf." Yeah, they, mascot. they call it they call it a beaver wolf. If you look at the signs on the wall, yes, I look at <laughs> the signs on the wall. They really it's called beaver they call wolf. it beaver yeah. wolf. Yeah, wow, beaver that wolf. If you shorten thing. that, if you shorten it, it's boof. <gasps> Oh shit! A boof. 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 And he says, "Oh my god, I want a supercut of every time he says boof." I don't know if he was trying to remember her name because he was run- he was running back and forth, but he said her name so many times. No, he ah, said boof. Boof, boof all the boof. time. Boof. He said, boof. Uh, "So boof, I guess, is somebody's real girlfriend growing up." I think Matthew Wiseman, the the other writer, not Loeb, but the Wiseman guy, <laughs> real he had, girlfriend. He had a girlfriend what? in high school named Boof, and he, that's why he oh. named her that. Oh, that's cool. Aww. I thought it was fake. I'm like, who the hell you name Boof? But yeah. it's real, according to this, anyway. What is what is Boof short for anyway? Boofany? What is? Well, I don't want to tell you. It's, I think it's nasty when you. you, you know, think, oh, would, I think it. I, I, think it should, I think she was just a farty child. <laughs> <laughs> she just farted a lot. Her farty. real name was Sharon LaBoof, yeah. and uh, mm. they called her Boof for short. There you go. Ah, Nicely okay. done. There you go. Uh, is okay. I got a sports question. Sorry if no one knows this. If someone in our audience wants to write in, that's fine. The wrong people, but go for it. We'll try it. Is it legal for me as an opposing player who got kicked out of the game for fouling out? I've got five fouls. I'm fouled out of the game. Either high school, college, or NBA rules. Is it legal for me to stand at the bottom of the key and stare down the shooter? That's the reason why that ref was like, "Ah!" okay. (laughs) The whole the whole point is you you go to locker room. Because they don't want you having anything to do with the game. Like, what's what's this guy doing out there? Like, the the refs had no control over any basketball that was depicted no. in this movie. No. Yeah, there, there may as well have not been refs. It's okay. high school football, though. Basketball. I said football. Okay. Yeah, you said Fair football, enough. but you mean basketball. I don't know why. I know like, what there you were mean. there basketball. were several times where, like, if a ref had seen a high school basketball player clotheslining another one, they yeah. would have just fouled them out of the game. Instantly, you get ejected. They're just not going to put up with that. We're, we're talking about children, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. It was, but him standing there doing that, I just went, no, you don't. I don't think no, you yeah. get to dramatic do that. Dramatic effect. Totally dramatic effect. Not accurate. Absolutely. Lame. 
Oh, or please yeah. do that. Actually, make that part of the game. Like, give me a <laughs> you know Trailblazers versus Rockies yeah. and have. Yeah. Or no, that's baseball. Whoever fouls, fouls you gets to stare you down. Just yeah, like glare like at you three feet away from you. Yeah, if you foul yeah. out of the game, like <laughs> back in the day when Robin would foul out, which happened a lot, he could just stand yeah. down there and stare you down when you did and glare free throws. Mm. Freaking yeah, there love are a that. bunch of examples. There's a there's a whole sequence where Michael J. Fox and this other guy are. Uh, challenging each other over possession of the basketball and they've there's four hands on the ball and any basketball ref blows a whistle immediately as soon as they got four hands on the ball right. and they turn it into a jump ball yeah but for some reason in this movie these two guys are pulling each other and looking looking real mean in the eyes close to, uh-huh. oh my gosh doesn't really work that way unfortunately drama drama yeah it's for, it's for the drama all right, we're gonna take uh, we're gonna take uh, a jump into the clips if you guys are uh, down yeah. for that. Oh, you're yeah. gonna do clips? Excellent news because I got clips and there's a bunch of them. Let's start with this one about uh, uh, people suck. You guys suck. All right, you guys suck. Yeah, I know. Suck. That was um, uh, your good looking uh, boyfriend, Nick. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Mick. Nick. Um, it's so funny how. I would have seen this. Well, if I saw this now, I'd go. Well, I'll bet that guy never went on to do shit, and he's the most busy actor in this movie. <laughs> he so kind of is, yeah. Yeah, he's he stayed had some staying power. Um, all right, here's one about a uh, what? Oh, it's time to eat. Great game out there today. You want a thigh or a wing or something? We haven't even talked about the coach. No, oh, really. yeah, he's he's always uh, chewing on something, whether it be gum, chicken, or whatever. He's yeah. always eating something. Yeah, yeah the, the Jay Thomas like. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Oh my gosh, yeah. I couldn't think of what he reminded me of, but. Uh, the stuff I read said that the dad actor was almost the coach, and then they changed their minds and oh. uh, put that. Guy That's in. good because this guy was really good at being, you know, flip floppy, telling stories that you didn't want to listen to, but somehow still got your attention. He would have been a yeah. terrible dad, terrible dad. Yeah, guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, here's the what is this? Oh, this is the coach. I wrote couch. Way to go, Scott. This is the horses. couch, everybody, or coach. A couple years back, a kid came to me much the same way you're coming to me now saying to be pretty much the same thing that you're saying. He wanted to drop off the team. Mother was uh, a widow, all crippled up. She was scrubbing floors. She had uh, <laughs> had this pin in her hip. <laughs> that I want to know if they, he, he improvised or because a lot of times I was like, this almost feels like improv. You know, yeah. Improv. Yeah, I'm not sure. I liked him. I he thought he was. Um, he was funny for the role. Yeah. Of, Jay, you know, anything Tarsons. you want to know? I've always got time, and then he's like, "Nope, uh, sorry, nope. just cut it short." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Uh, here's what my mom used to tell me when I'd play my NES all night. All right, and then I have a question for you guys. Hi, Scotty. How are you doing? What was the score? All right, so that's what she said to me when the I would score. play my I NES agree. all night. But here's my question to the two Brians and even the Randy in the room: You all have relatively common names. <laughs> right. yes, Brian, Brian especially a lot of Brian's right a lot of Brian's yeah and there's a lot of movies with Brian's in them I'm not used to seeing movies where my name gets said all the time and I don't yes, like it a lot. it makes me feel weird it feels right, weird Scott, and do you, off and do I don't you even like it when when the, uh, the the supposed hot chick looks down at a piece of paper that's got your name on it and then rolls her eyes <laughs> no I don't like that either all of I, it anything. I was really hoping that we'd get that gift because that that feels like the, the now if they if they'd have called him Scotty the whole time it would have reminded yeah. me of my parents if they'd have called him Scott the whole time only it would have reminded me of just me and I just don't like it felt uncomfortable every time my name got mentioned this it's is not really I, interesting I because like, you, you've seen euro trip right you've seen like <laughs> yeah, Scott, you've you seen don't, Scott don't, yeah. pilgrim right yeah i've seen those same thing i have those same feelings in those it's weird okay i can't explain I like it scott, i don't yeah scott lang and man i mean i feel like the scott I, I see more scots in film than i think i do brian's yeah now that you say that i guess there are a lot and then when i think of um when I think of Ant Man, I don't think of it as much. But maybe they don't say his first name as often, or maybe they do, and I don't. I just don't notice it. Or maybe it's because this is set in a time where it's the '80s. I feel the vibe of the '80s. I was a. I was that age then. Yeah, yeah, that could be it. Yeah, I was a. I was a kid named Randy when suddenly this absolute terror called the Rich Meister on Saturday Night Live came along. All <laughs> uh, right, Randy. <laughs> oh, Whatever, Randy. About that, yes. Oh my gosh, dude! Rob Schneider, you monster! Yeah, oh, he is such a monster. He is not, kind of a not monster. Not to fall back, not to fall back to the coach real quick, but Jay Tarses, uh, he, he actually he did writing stuff. He wrote, he co-wrote or helped write the Great Muppet Caper and a bunch of other comedies. Maybe he did punch up his dialogue. Maybe, I mean, Great Muppet Caper, I wouldn't call the greatest written film ever. Muppet it... takes Manhattan. He yeah. wrote, written by uncredited, Short Circuit. Yeah, the coach. 
that you know we what? saw. Short circuit is bad though. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember, Still. remember this line. Oh my China! Remember that he oh, wrote China. that. <laughs> oh my China! Uh, uh, more sensual. I wrote. More sensual, darling. We need to feel you. I want to smell you. Hurt me. Hurt me. Oh my God! This, me. along with the dad playing basketball with Boof, just bugged me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't oh, like it. Yeah, the whole playing basketball yeah. with Boof. I mean, look, I. There are a bunch of neighbor kids around here who I adore. They were like my own kids. And if they came by and I was shooting hoop, I'd say, ah, come in here. Let's all shoot. We can all play back. It's so yeah. like, I get it. Right. But your girlfriend ish sort of girl and you're alone with the dad. It's a one on one. I don't know. That whole thing was weird. Really? Oh, you're, you're weird. It was a little yeah, weird. I, did, I didn't bother. I didn't bother me because he kept, you know, it wasn't like he was ignoring uh, Michael J. Fox's character. He yeah. kept looking at yeah. him like, hey, Boof, come over to see you. And I've been an entertainer right. trying to keep her here just, because he you're like exactly you the dad her away. Like, oh, let's yeah, let's shoot some hoops while we wait for Scott to come home. Totally. Uh, See that? He's got to be. He's got to be the mom and the dead, right? He's got to right. manage. Totally. totally. I'm not making a strong case here. I'm just letting you know that I felt something. Yeah, you felt a little something, something. You don't know what it was, but you yeah. felt it. I get it. Uh, all right, here's a good Teen Wolf laugh. <laughs> That's Styles doing his thing. <laughs> Listen to this '80s business. Darren, Darren. Oh my gosh, dude. So I real mean, genius. I felt like I at it. some point Val Kilmer is going to come around the corner and cut a slice of ice into a coin. Yeah, I've had a bit of. <laughs> it's had true. A, has sure had a bit of that lately with uh, him. That that actual movie, this one. What else have we done that's kind of in this vein lately? Maybe that's just those oh, two. Burbs. Oh, Burbs. Oh, Burbs. Yeah. Burbs, Burbs that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm down with it, though. Mm -hmm. Bring us sure, back. Bring us back. Uh, no ID, no beer. Listen, no ID, no goddamn beer. Can't you get that through your thick skull? Oh, my gosh, dude. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. And that, that weird heartbeat thing because he was about to do his stupid voice. Yep. Which sounds like... <laughs> sound like keg. this. Here it is. A, a keg of beer. It sounds like a horror movie. 80s. It did so, yeah. yeah. That's why it's all demonic. That's the point, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be a monster movie of sorts. Yeah, but it's supposed to sound like... <laughs> like the exorcist yeah that's what it was that's there yeah. you go that's exactly what it sounded like all right uh we heard this at the top of the show it's always fun to play again it landed on my face yeah michael j fox <laughs> it landed that is so him everything about yeah. that yeah yeah uh oh i like this chase cars and bite the mailman <laughs> <laughs> i like Pretty that good. uh how to avoid marvel lawyers Here's what you. Here's how you do this line if you're just trying to avoid a lawsuit. Here you go. You're going to have great power, and with great power goes a greater responsibility. Yeah, <laughs> greater <laughs> responsibility. I mean, like I just pictured yeah. Jeff Loeb writing that line and then going, oh, "I got to change it a little." My yeah. Oh, that's bit. hilarious. It's pretty I did great. Not even pick that up. Wow. Pretty great. All right, here's a howl that I hate. Um, hate it. Don't do that again. <laughs> hate it. Uh let's see. So like uh, this would never get said in a movie today. All right, I hesitated on playing this, but I'm going to play it because it's important to just look right into the sun when it comes to our past. This is what we said. We don't say this anymore. I can't believe how casually it was used. Here it is. Wait a minute. Are you going to tell me you're a fag? I mean, if you're going to tell me you're a fag, I don't think I can handle it. I'm not a fag. I'm a werewolf. They would never do that now. No. I'm not a I'm not a British term for cigarettes. <laughs> what are you right. talking about? <laughs> I was hoping someone would bring that up. Uh, here's Styles giggling again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I really don't like his trope. It annoys me. Really, the, the yeah. guy, the party guy, who's always got it going on, and is wearing sunglasses to class, and all. I just I don't know. I just don't. yeah. Yeah. No one knew that. Who knew that kid? He's trying Nobody. to sell you some cheap trick tickets. He yeah. just wants you to appreciate the allure of Robin Zander and the charisma of uh, yeah. Rick Nielsen. There you go. <laughs> Here is a wolf. What did I write? Oh, wolf person teacher. I don't know why I wrote this. Uh, yeah. Uh, wolf, wolf, wolf person, whatever your name is. Person. Yeah, that's why. That guy. That's uh, wolf, right wolf there. Person. That's that's our uh, Gregory Itzen from do you, 24. Do you think him and... Uh, the girl were, uh, you know, I mean, it's fictitious, but think him and the blonde girl were Lori you know? Griffin. So in the story, do you think in the story? Uh, yeah, because because yeah, yeah. the way she talked about him and also her sort of willingness to as she was portrayed anyway. Right. 
Right. I think I think maybe there was a little. There might be an Im- implication. Sure. That's how she got the role, right? Maybe yep. just filling in the blanks. Possibly. Yeah. 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 Uh, when my beard was long. Underneath all that hair, you're still a dork, Scott. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that had to hurt, Scott. <laughs> it did. Boy, yeah, that's a rough one. For I you didn't like it. Have to cap out. I have three pieces of bad advice. Number one. Never get less than twelve hours sleep. All right. <laughs> Number two. Never play cards with a guy who's got the same first name as a city. Yep, Denver yeah. or something like that. Um, Cleveland. Yeah. Cleveland's a good one. Uh, bad advice number three. And never go near a lady who's got a tattoo of a dagger on her body. All right. <laughs> yeah. that, well, that last one's backwards. Is it? That's backwards. Yeah. You're saying you should trust them. I think. Or date them. I think he. That's I a, think he wrote some of his own lines because he was a writer for the Carol Burnett show too. I think he, oh, and he did he a really lot of comedy writing. Yeah, yeah, he did a lot of comedy writing. Yeah, I could I see think that. He might have punched up. Yeah. It felt a lot different than everything else. It's, yeah, I could see that. It's been a lot different. That's cool. I, you know what? It's not a fact. Just pa- make, just, you know, more power to him because I actually really like the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he also said this. Everything else is cream cheese. All right, great. Uh, this is where the dad says, woof, you cannot convince me otherwise. Here you go. Unless that was another werewolf doing a handstand on top werewolf. of Styles' wolfmobile and making a fool of himself. He said it twice. So you got this. Yeah. Werewolf. 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 And then you got wolf. Wolf. He did it twice. Wolf. Like, yeah, I'm, you're on Some set. people say it like that. Yeah, but they shouldn't. It's wrong. No, there are people who say that they are wrong. They shouldn't. Why are you so mad? How often do you, this werewolf come up in a conversation? <laughs> I, I not, can't believe you would dare say werewolf. I'm not mad wolf. at all. I just think you shouldn't say it. I think you should say wolf. L, it's it got an L. Those words whatever, for... whatever birthday. <laughs> I don't say <laughs> birthday. <laughs> no. Okay, Reese Pieces. Yeah, you say birthday and Reese. Let's play some stones. They're, they're both. Whatever. What is? What does Randy say? Uh, I'm just. It's one of those words where oh, I'm like, what's that L doing in there? I feel like I need yeah. to pronounce that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like yeah. some words. Some words have extra letters for no reason, right? Like a beehive. There's two E's. So neither one of them is needed. But. <laughs> But she will but pronounce there's... every single letter of chorizo. Chorizo. That's right. true. Yes, because they're all, they're all in there. Right. All those letters are in there, I'm going to say. <laughs> right. If they're in there, Randy will say them. All right. Uh, yeah, here's a up. fun line yeah. that I enjoy that I'll probably use for other things. Lost control of his bodily functions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, that music again. Yeah, to, if you I, enter in uh, 43 on your Casio keyboard, you get that that sound. I really like this music. I didn't realize until recording yeah. with you right now. I really like yeah. this music. You do, eh? <laughs> okay. I take it. I think that's great. I don't want to take that sure. away from you. I don't. Uh, uh, but, you know, after school special, for sure. Oh, big time, It made time, me feel dude. like it, it kind of reminded me of some of the, pluck, the, 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 some of the stuff in the labyrinth a little bit. Oh sure, yeah. not the not the big David Bowie productions, but some of the little in between stuff. Yeah, Reminds yeah. me of all those movies from that time. Yeah, that Very whole era, they were they were locked in on that sound. Yeah, um, but it, Brian's right. It's like, Dad, I think I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> it works, right? It works. Dad, I've I've fallen for a Nigerian prince online scam. <laughs> <laughs> totally works. Uh, totally works. It works yeah. no matter what you do. <laughs> Uh, here's a, a boof. 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 It's fun to say. It is. Uh, did he say, does this song say, is this to think I'm stupid like grandma? I need some help here. I'm going to play. Yeah, it. yeah. They, they would do a whole werewolf thing. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Do you yeah. think I'm stupid? You think I'm stupid like grandma. <laughs> is that what she's I saying? great big old teeth. So Mad Libs lyrics is what that is. Yeah. That's Mad yeah. Libs lyrics. <laughs> I swear that's what he's saying. How did but... they get AI to write music all the way back then? <laughs> no, Mad Libs. Mad, before AI, Mad Libs. I get the funniest thing from Monday's TMS, Brian. I can't wait to play it. Okay. You just reminded me of it. Uh, all right, stick. What? Oh, stick with your own kind. Stick with your own kind, freak. Okay. All right. Freak. freak. He yeah. said that a and lot. That's an 80s insult. Oh, well, big yeah. time freaks. But were... I only know my dad. It was either freak, nerd, or British for cigarette. Those are the three yeah. insults you would yell at people. Uh, here, you're going to wolf out. We need to see the wolf. So wolf out. huh? Wolf up. Wolf it. Whatever you do. Uh, pronto, let me go. Pronto, let me go. <laughs> that's your, uh, that's your uh, the, the, oh, God, I can't remember his name. Uh, Simpsons uh, oh, voice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Harry Shearer. That's the Harry yeah, Shearer you, sure. you uh, ordered on Wish. Oh, weird. Yeah, that is all I like that. Nicely, nicely yeah, pulled. All right. Well, that's all good and well. And now we have this.
Yeah. It's time for the film check check checklist 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 check, check checklist checklist checklist. Uh, I hate people say checklist. Yeah, I know ah. it's the worst. It's the worst. <laughs> Everyone probably had hair in their mouth and food. Check. I think that's uh, just true. Yeah. Some of the worst eighties music we've heard on the show. Check. And finally, Aww. I would have totally dated a girl named Boof. <laughs> totally. I would have. Can I? Before we get to our Twitter post, I, speaking of bad eighties music. I did a search for "Think I'm Stupid Like Grandma" and I found the entire lyrics yeah. for for "Big Bad Wolf" by the Wolf Sisters from this yeah, movie. Yeah, they they really leaned into it, didn't they? They really did. So, like the <laughs> chorus is, "You're a big bad wolf. I'd be into your scene. Big bad wolf, sniff my peaches and cream. Big yes. bad wolf, ooh, I'm wanting to scream. Big big bad wolf. Yes. Wow. Yes. What? Well, it's the yes. sniffing the peaches and cream. What? Uh, girl, you don't, don't tell know. me your basket's empty. Must be a few treats left. Maybe a bowl of cotton candy. I'm big, fluffy, and soft. Probably not something you want to say to a girl. Uh, don't you leave me with crumbs in my whiskers. Must be a few sweets left. Girl, can't you see that the wolf's still hungry? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, well, a terrible song i don't like that it is at all a horrible song. i really don't like it i hate that song it's official yeah. uh and it's about and there's the whole line about so the grandma thing is probably is it in there does it it's say it yeah, 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 yeah don't yeah, you think confirmed. i'm stupid like grandma you'd never fool me once so it's basically like that's so yeah. bad did you, did you think yeah. you misheard it yeah that's absolutely what they said yeah, i really yeah. did think i misheard it i thought it was misheard yeah, no, there's a i'll put a link in our uh, discord to the entire uh, lyrics and if you click that you get the lyric video but you get uh if you click the more oh, button no. underneath the video you get all the lyrics is it in that teen wolf jersey font i hope it is Oh, the whole thing's in there. The Holy whole shit. song. Yeah. All right. You didn't even talk about the the custom T-shirts that just arrive yeah, suddenly yeah. in oh, the middle yeah. of this movie, like, and people are wearing them. Why? I, yeah. I just, it was amazing. That was true. It was, it was a, it was a craze. It was the '80s. That's what you did. You yeah. got your, you know, you did all that stuff. I also, we didn't talk about. Let's talk about Styles' his shirts because he always has stuff like dick nose <laughs> on it and stuff. You know, obviously oh, yeah. he had his own. He obviously had his own T-shirt printing his business. Own screen printing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I was in high school later, but when I was in high school, if I yeah. had gone to school wearing a shirt that said "Dick Knows," it would have been the end of my life. Right. It's not, it's not just I would have received some kind of punishment. I would not be here talking to you right now. I would have, we, got, I would have been murdered. And the full shirt is, what are you looking at, Dick Nose? Right, right. Yeah. And you would usually wear a jacket over something like that until you felt comfortable to, to take it off or you need like any teachers were watching, right? Yeah. I'm trying to think if That's I had anything even close to that. I don't think yeah, I, I grew did. up in South Texas. I didn't have a jacket. Yeah. I don't think I had well, anything like that. I'm thinking. I'm trying I to think. Can't, I, I just can't. I don't I'm think just, I ever had like, dick nose. That's pretty specific. But I did have some <laughs> questionable shirts. It is, yeah. It's very specific, isn't it? Yes. Dick nose. All right. And then, did, did we talk about the scene where he hel- he turns into wolf and helps Styles find the missing weed stash? Uh, yeah. Because well, mm-hmm. that's right after the homophobic slurs. So that kind of yeah. overshadowed it. Oh, right. I just, I just love that. I love that. Anything where you're using actual dog abilities to your mm-hmm, benefit right. instead of right. like a, you become a dog and you're great, good at basketball. I like that was weird. There are yeah, some and, benefits. good at bowling. Admitted. Like how, how does being a wolf make you good at bowling all of a sudden? Yeah, it's that's a weird that's a weird thing. Like you've never seen a werewolf bowl. Come on. Come on now. <laughs> I guess I haven't. So that's a good point. Yeah. 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 Very good point. Until you do, we'll make no judgment. All right. Uh, let's see. Star Trek connections. I believe they are going to be at least one. Uh, the the liquor guy. This I know, is but surprising number. All bit rolls. Uh, people that you're not going to recognize, but they're here. They are. Uh, Harvey Vernon played the old man clerk. Uh, mm-hmm. We talked about him briefly. Uh, he had on um, one episode of Deep Space Nine. He was a bit character. Mark Holton, who played Chubb, uh, Chubb. was was also on one episode of Deep Space Nine. Bit character. Uh, Gregory Itzen is a little bit more uh, expressive in the Star Trek universe. Uh, he was the English teacher in this movie, and he was in an episode of DS9, an episode of Voyager, and an episode of Enterprise. Oh my. my uh, my conclusion person, the person that caught my attention the most in this list, is Carl Steven. He was Whistle Boy <laughs> in this movie. Whistle Boy. We whistle both Boy whistle in night. this movie. Yeah. Whistle Boy. Whistle Boy mm-hmm. got to play young Spock in Star Trek 3. Oh, nice. And oh, that's cool. That is cool. That is cool. That is cool. Yeah. Have that in your resume. 
What you? What have you done? Yeah, well, I was a kid, years. and I it was young Spock yeah. screaming and crying or whatever. He did. Star Trek that whistle didn't affect the dad, by the way. The kid blows the whistle in the hardware store, and the dad is I, completely unaffected I, by I that. I thought it was like kind of like the once you get to be a certain age werewolf, you no longer hear those those tones. Oh, uh, you, you can you uh, can sure okay that's right. right. Or he All just is tentatives. used to it. He might just be used to it because it's new to him, right? It's like Superman in that uh, right. Zack Snyder thing. He's like, everything's loud. He's seeing through things. He doesn't understand it. He's yeah. freaking out. All right. Fair enough. Probably telekinetics <laughs> or tele uh, te people with telepathy that say, no, I don't hear people's voices in my head anymore. But we kind of have to, but we have to sort of make this up and fill in the yeah. blanks. Cause yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. I mean, why would you even sell that? If you, if you're a werewolf, why would you even sell dog whistles yeah. in your hardware store? Yep. Yeah. That's maybe That's maybe because question. he's not a werewolf. Maybe it's because he's a werewolf. Oh, <laughs> is that why? why. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, makes sense now. Soundtrack grade to give it an O. Oh, go oh, yeah, touche, my good man. <laughs> Soundtrack grade to give it an O I T for out of its time or of its time. Either way, it's of its time. Of its time. Uh, uh, I'm. <laughs> uh, let's do the social media post. You guys know how this works. In uh, 280 characters or less, you're required to sum the film up and we're going to start this week with randy i do not remember writing this so bear with me i'm gonna we're gonna experience it for the first time together all right teen wolf once each month when the full moon rises your shoes grow by three whole sizes mm -hmm. they said you were going to get body hair but surely they didn't mean everywhere it's growing from skin below your eyes just imagine the fur on your upper thighs and when you change back where does it go I'll bet your clothes smell like sourdough. Oh, <laughs> it's actually really good. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. That'll be, by the way, if you're a patron, you get uh, full text versions of that poem and Brian's lyrics to the songs he does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do. So sign up today or be lame. Uh, just kidding. You're not lame. We love you no matter who you are. All right. Moving on to Brian Dunaway, please. Teen Wolf. Like the movie you make in between your successful TV series and your big budget Rod Robert Zemeckis film. Uh, but I did hear the shop teacher get his dick caught in a vacuum cleaner. Hashtag boof. <laughs> Is that the sound it makes? Boof? Yep. Boof. Ouch. That sounds painful. Finally, Brian Ibbett. All right. Uh, first one is Teen Wolf. Scout Wolf was considered for the role. Oh! Yeah. Oh! Woo -hoo. Uh, and then this, this the, the the first one that I wrote. I again, I wrote it before I realized that the person in the bleachers was a woman. Teen Wolf, man, he really pulled it out at the end. <laughs> awesome. I'm 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 not gonna be able to go with it being a woman. I'm just like my initial impression <laughs> is what's gonna stick to in my mind. It. Yeah, we you know what and you well, saw and you're sticking with it. It's give, fine. Give this a year and we'll completely forgot about this episode and all I remember is it was a, a, a penis at the end. Of yeah, it. that's all yeah. we'll know. Perfect. Yeah, that's all. Gets the kind of. But, monkey brains we have uh mm -hmm. well done everybody nicely done let's get to these alternate titles just handed to me this was almost called mid-20s wolf with friends pushing 30 or oh. <laughs> happy boof day all right moving on oh happy boof day <laughs> we got a phone call about street kings and i'll let it speak for itself this message is for film sack scott brian brian and randy i just call listened it. to the ghost dog episode movie i want to recommend Street Kings, Forrest Whitaker, and a very dark role for Keanu Reeves. It's really worth a watch. As an aside, 1979's The Villains, Arnold Schwarzenegger as a cowboy, definitely worth tracking down. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, Enjoy the show. That sounds interesting. I've never heard of a the Western. Villain, that one, I, I remember The Villain as a parody of... Because I remember the the um, trailer as a kid. It was the '80s, right? He said '80s movie called The Villain. '79 right? like or something 70s. like that. '79, yeah. 79. and it was it was Paul Lind who did the okay. trailer, and he said the villain was the like all I remember. And it was like a, a guy tying a lady to the uh, the tracks of a, oh. a, a speeding train coming. Yeah, this is slapstick all the way. I'm gonna Douglas, find. Yeah. yeah, we should Paul find that. Lind. I've never even heard of it. That's crazy. That's Paul the, uh, Lind of all people. That's nuts. Boy, his, I mean, this is either Paul Lynn was doing great or Schwarzenegger was doing bad. I don't know how to look at it. Yeah. I don't know how to look at it. But Street Kings, <laughs> I don't go. know anything about this either. <laughs> okay. Play a little, play a little audio of this guy. All Let's right. I'd be happy YouTube to. In our Discord right here. Here we go. Enjoy. The old west where the women were shy. Would you mind taking hold of these, please? The Indians were restless. And the villains were the heroes of the day. 
Kirk Douglas, Anne Margaret, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Foster Brooks, Mel Tillis, Ruth Buzzy, and Paul Lind in the Bill and Bated PG. Hold on a minute. Fayette Paul Bell. Lind is an indie. He's a Native American guy? He's a Native American, yeah. Wow. Uh, can we, can we, I don't know what to do with this. Can we get this? Yeah. The That's villain. Like Kirk Douglas. Right. What was Kirk Douglas doing? Slumming it, dude. <laughs> and Margaret. I mean, these are people who, you know. They had careers. Boy, I, we totally forgot they also mentioned Street Kings, which was from 2008. Yes, Probably more we appropriate yeah. for what we do. Uh, probably a lot more yeah 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 this looks interesting i don't remember this at all hugh laurie chris evans forrest whitaker kind of reeves yeah that looks all right in here too no i would watch that um i don't know uh uh, i was gonna say about the um oh the schwarzenegger thing he this wasn't even mentioned in that documentary he talked about all his old stuff but i don't remember this no no he probably pretended like it didn't happen is he like his little cameo probably that art that art he's the handsome he's the handsome stranger in the thing of course uh there's also mashing finger Mm-hmm. Great. <laughs> Look at these names. Great. That sounds like a real non racist take on an Indian name. Yeah. Nice, oh, nice he's, he's sure, nervous. Yeah. Paul Lind is nervous elk. Oh, <laughs> wow. That was that generation's Wagons East or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gross. Um, I'm sure that it was some of what some of the one of the stars that they just described. It had to be one of their last films or their last film. So, yeah, feels like it. Uh, well, thank you for the call. 801-471-0462. That same number got us this text. Uh, or no, this is a tweet, actually. Got from J.L. Reed, and it just stood out to me, so I wanted to use it. Uh, he is pin bent on Twitter, P-I-N-B-E-N-T. Great name. Oh. <laughs> he says, listening to the episode, I'm wondering if you're going to mention Prey. This was last week talking about... Oh, yeah. um, a lot uh, of people said that. Yeah, yeah, mixing cowboys and aliens was weird yeah. to us because we couldn't take him seriously. But he says, if you're going to mention Prey, while not a Western... It definitely mixes a similar time period narrative and a sudden alien incursion. Uh, why does one work for you, but the other doesn't? And you know what? Really great point because Prey mm-hmm. is yeah, incredible. Yeah. yeah, like they nail that, and I, and I wouldn't want Prey set any other way. So why did that work? I don't know. Uh, be, less dialogue, way less dialogue. Hmm. I guess so. Or or less trying <laughs> to be uh, less. I guess so. Less All trying right. to be both films, like less trying to be a western and an alien movie, and instead yeah. it's just straight up yeah. like. Here are people in a time period, and here comes a, p- a predator, and yeah. off we go. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's right. He's dead on. That's a way good example of that working. And yeah, it is. More of that, please. It's a great movie. And, I, and yeah. I, I really go back and forth on films that make the choice to have very little dialogue. Because, like, on the one hand, I kind of like quoting movies, you know? But, like, on the other hand, it really makes you pay attention. Like, the, the best parts of Predator are the jokes between these muscle men but the second best parts are Arnie in silence yeah, scared i agree it's mm-hmm. like uh uh i think a bit and i were talking about it, the um apocalyptico or whatever it's called yes the mel the mel gibson thing right yeah that movie has yeah. no english and no subtitles and no anything really it's just visual and it's an amazing way to tell a story it's also brutal as hell but yeah yeah very violent gory but it's so good i love that movie um well anyway thank you for your your feedbacks uh you can email us to filmsack at gmail.com and again that number is 801-471-0462 someone told me yesterday that the frog pants number they have now have more memorized than their own phone number which i think is great <laughs> that maybe well, that person to... clearly calls too much yeah or texts too much maybe an issue there um but anyway thank you pin bent and uh, uh aka jl reed that was really cool of you to write that and we do check twitter and all this other stuff we try to you know see what you guys are saying so uh keep all the feedback coming uh, i'd like to mention a couple of patrons today patreon.com slash film sack we'd like to welcome warren gibson we got some old schoolers like jd wilson daniel a bunch of great folks in our uh in our um, patreon you may have noticed i put up a host special i don't know four days ago or something i, I loved it scott it was a good time and, there, um, and there's some discussion yeah. on our patreon like scott scott has a really strong like emotional case about uh things you like and you know yeah, movies in like particular. what you like yeah. yeah yeah not just that but like let it mostly just let other people have their thing mm-hmm. and then also if something's not here yet don't quite make a judgment like i'm i'm equally uh, skeptical and excited at the same time for this pop tart seinfeld thing coming out yeah. Oh yeah, unfrosted. Yeah. Did you see, did you saw... see Seinfeld on uh, the late shows? No. Uh, is he talking? Yeah, I assume so he's, he's, uh... he's making the rounds right now. Yeah, and I he's, so. just, he's so good on a late night 
talk show. No, he's, so good. he's amazing on there. And I, and I look, I'm as excited for that as I am any project right now, comedy wise. But I also have a part of me that's like, this could either be great or garbage. But I don't know until it gets here. So poop, and I'm, you know. I was skeptical when I heard about the Roadhouse thing and I even commented to you guys. And I think it's because I got burned by the point break uh thing yeah, right, right. <laughs> that made me but one spin twice shy for the roadhouse remake oh right yeah see that one and that's one i haven't watched yet but i'm i have the same kind of i hear great things about it actually i hear it's i hear it's good yeah i've heard it's a good time and that you can do look worse oh and speaking of good times the new cartoon excited about that yeah i was gonna ask you dude i think i tagged you on that d are you excited about a good times cartoon or what yeah i'm actually ex i'm actually excited about it. now of course good times wasn't made for me this tv show back in the day but i loved it watched it enjoyed it found a lot of things to connect with um, and now they're making a cartoon, but it's a little bit, uh, does it, it's, it's about the Evans's kids, kids. So it's like the grandkids and it seems a little bit different. I think, I don't know if it's Seth MacFarlane's coming in and doing this part, but there's a baby in it and I'm like, okay, another baby in a cartoon. How original for you. And, but he's not like the, he's not like the big guy for making this show. So sure. there's a lot of talented, uh, black actors and comedians who are on this show. And I'm interested to see where they went going with it. But I don't know yet. I, I'm I'm interested, but it doesn't look like there's not a lot of fan service. And as stupid as that sounds, I kind of need some good times fan service. I need some dynamite. Well, and maybe they'll give it. Maybe they'll give it to you. But that's trailer? a that's a great question. Is it? it, it because JJ's not around, and you know they have these yeah. actors that aren't here for it. How many people remember good times? I mean, you do. Obviously, you're yeah. a big fan. Mm -hmm. I think a yeah. lot of people kind of just straight up don't know. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm fine with, I'm excited the other to thing. watch it. I don't mind, you know, keep remaking Ghostbusters, keep making new stuff. If you do it well, right. then, and I made the point on the show about how Fargo succeeded in breaking all expectations about what could be done. And I think it can be done with anything in the right hand. So I don't know, just judge stuff when it gets here. Yeah. And if it yeah. sucks, yeah. say it sucks. It's fine. You don't like it, but watch it. But watch it before you say it's. Yeah, don't just gang up and go. Oh, that girl's in it. I don't like. Well, okay. Yeah, review bomb or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I hate that. I, the advice I always want to give people is: be careful about what you just out and out hate, because you will be remembered for that much more than for what you love. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. I might have fury road on my tombstone but yeah i get your point you make I a good usually, point usually i don't usually hate on things especially when someone is actively enjoying it i i had a friend who broke me of this real quick when we were in high school where we would go to eat anything he would just sit there with disdain and anything i was eating and always just look at it and go how do you eat that and i'm like oh god mother effer I'm trying to enjoy my, I paid $20 yeah. for this food and I'm trying to enjoy it. And you're ever going, Ew, that's dang. Me feel I don't like it. It. <laughs> right. Oh, I don't like it. I don't ask you to eat it. It's on my plate, fool. I feel you got but, some uh, pent up stuff here. You got to deal with man. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now whenever I'm looking at something and if I'm about to, if I'm about to crap on it, I'm like, Oh, is anybody out here enjoying this? Oh, it looks like people are enjoying this. There's no sense of me crapping on it. If they're enjoying it. Yeah. Know, let people so. have what they like. Yeah. It's, it's all fine. fine. Uh, anyway, that's a thing you can go check out. Also, no commercials. We can do pre-show content every week. This week included. We had a, a very interesting discussion about humanity and why we do things that we do and why we behave the way we do online. Uh, if that sounds interesting to you, well, then today's your day. Um, you also get movie-related art in the mail. I just did one of uh, Anton Chigurh from uh, the 2007 classic Coen Brothers film, No Country for Old Men. And I've been wanting to draw him for years, so I finally did it. It's coming to you guys in print form. Uh, if this sounds interesting at all, go check it out. Patreon.com slash film sack. Our next movie will be on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Ooh. From 1969. We're getting our Lazenby on, Randy. How do you feel Lazenby. about that? You excited? Right. I'm I'm very excited. I love this movie. I haven't seen it in years, though, so I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it with you guys. Uh, isn't it interesting that if you remade this movie by title, it would be called On His Majesty's Secret Service? Oh, oh, oh interesting. Okay. Interesting indeed. Yeah. Think about that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, an old one, and we are, you know, we are slow. We've been doing this. We pepper these throughout. We're going to go all the way yep. up to all the ones we've never seen uh, over time, not back to back, because that's just too much James Bond. But <laughs> I've never seen this one. I have no Lazenby experience. That dude's still alive, and uh, we're going to see why. Uh, maybe I don't know why. Maybe we won't. Because <laughs> he's Australian. He's Australian. They never die. Anyway, that'll Australian be Australian uh, for Bond. That's right. Next <laughs> <laughs> next week, that'll be that, and uh, we look forward to it greatly. In the meantime, filmsec.com is our website. Go there for all the things. That's going to do it for us, for me, for Brian, for Brian, and for Andy. 
Boof. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Get more at frogpants.com. You guys suck. Jeez. Yeah. Easy wow. there, chief. Don't so s- unnecessarily mean.